This is Jocko Podcast number 137 with Echo Charles and me, Jocko Willink. Good evening, Echo. Good evening. If you know the way broadly, you will see it in all things. And that is a simplified quote from Musashi's Book of Five Rings. And it's a solid quote. Makes sense. I, I believe it to be true. But at the same time, while I agree with Musashi, that if you know the way broadly, you'll see it in all things, there's a little bit of a problem with that concept. And the problem is, how do you get to know the way broadly? I mean, the way is no easy thing to grasp. You aren't born with it. You don't just wake up with it. It's something that you have to learn, and it's something that you are always still learning. But even though you have to learn the way, at the same time, learning the way is hard because the the way is something that's hard to teach. And recently I've been asked in a couple, by a couple different people in a couple different scenarios how I learned what I learned. How have I learned what I learned? And this is, believe me, no claim that I know a ton of stuff. I don't. As I just said, I am still learning. But I will say that I do know the way broadly enough that I now see it everywhere and in everything. So, how did I learn the way? Well, it's kind of interesting because it's a combination of, actually it's, it's more of a collision of a bunch of different things, of course, my time in the SEAL teams, and I do trace a lot of it back to the SEAL platoon where we had a little mutiny, we had a bad boss, and. We ended up turning against him and he got fired and replaced by the best boss and and the juxtaposition and the contrast between really good leadership and really bad leadership made it very clear but it wasn't just that I, of course I had other great guys that I worked with in the SEAL teams that taught me a ton a great instructor cadre that put me through training that taught me a ton and you know I realize I always paid close attention to leadership and tactics and I think that's probably because I sought something that I might be able to get good at since there was a lot of things that I wasn't naturally good I wasn't naturally the strongest I wasn't naturally the fastest I wasn't naturally the best shot so I kind of paid attention to leadership and I paid attention to who did it well and who didn't and I paid attention to tactics and I paid attention to what worked and what didn't from a tactical perspective. And I read. Now, I will tell you right now, I did not read a lot by any stretch, especially compared to how much I read right now. But I read some important books that had a big impact on me. And of course, they were only books about war. And in those books about war, the things that I actually paid attention to wasn't like the wasn't the 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 political situation that was going on I, I paid attention to the leadership I paid attention to the tactics I paid attention to the human nature of how men reacted to war and so some of those books and again it wasn't a lot about face with the old breed, Battle Leadership, The Last Hundred Yards, some very straightforward books and books that I covered early on this podcast. And then, of course, on top of that, I got lucky with my deployments overseas and I got to experience war from a leadership perspective. And I started to see how things overlapped and intertwined. And one of the things that really helped me see the connections between leadership and tactics and human nature and life in general was jujitsu. I talk about jujitsu a lot. Obviously, we talk about jujitsu a lot. Jujitsu is a simple, straightforward, practical representation of the way. 
If you think about what it, what jiu-jitsu has in it, right? It has offense, it has defense, it has flanking, it has conservation of energy, it has deception, it has attack, it has concentration of effort, it has position, improving your position, it has maneuvering, it has placing baits and using feints, and always keeping your base and keeping your balance while at the same time trying to upset your opponents. Now, everything I just said, you could use that for combat, for tactical situations. You could also use it in business. You could use it in interactions with other human beings as you maneuver through human nature and how it you interact with it. And there's psychological elements inside of jujitsu as well that are reflected. Humility. You're gonna get humbled by jujitsu. And at the same time, dichotomy, you're gonna gain confidence. You're gonna know the truth. You're gonna know where you actually stand. You know, it's not, you're gonna get a belt, but that belt, it only represents, it only, it doesn't fully represent the reality of the situation. The reality of the situation is the truth, and in jujitsu, you know the truth. You're gonna be vulnerable. You're gonna. You're psychologically. You're gonna learn about tenacity. You're gonna. You're gonna have to have grit. You're gonna have to have durability. You're gonna have to have stability. And as I trained jujitsu and I garnered a better understanding of jujitsu, I started to have a better understanding of the way. And as I learned the way on the mats. The way revealed itself in combat, it revealed itself in leadership, in human nature, and in life. Because as you, and I talk about this as well, as you understand things from different angles, right? So when you learn the way in different disciplines, you start to see it from different angles, and eventually, I came to understand the way broadly. And now I do see it in everything. And this is another thing. The more I see it in everything, the more I see it in everything. So, understanding the way, like I said, a lot of it had to do with this thread. And I talked about it when we, when we talked about judo. I talked about how jujitsu was the thing that started. I started to see a connective thread between these, between these different disciplines and a lot of it my understanding of jiu-jitsu helped me in every other aspect and a lot of my in fact the vast majority of my understanding of jiu-jitsu comes from one person and the person I was lucky enough to learn from is a pioneer of the sport considered by many people to be one of the greatest grapplers ever a pr- he's a practitioner that actually revolutionized the sport of jiu-jitsu and grappling and his influence is still evident today world champion multiple times over also a mixed martial arts fighter who has faced some of the best in the world in some of the biggest arenas in that sport and someone who I have trained on the mats of justice with for over 20 years and who's been a close friend of mine that whole time through many ups and downs, through victories and defeats, through struggles of life on and off the mat, master of jiu-jitsu, and more important, a friend of mine, my brother, Dean Lister, who is now finally coming on the show. Dean, welcome to the show. Jacques <laughs> <laughs> Great to be here, brother. Thank you for the invite. Yeah, man. Uh, let's start at the beginning. And I was thinking about, I know a little bit about your beginning, and but I actually didn't realize that I know that you were raised somewhat in Panama. But where were you actually born? Born in Camp Pendleton, Oceanside here in San Diego. Because so your dad was in the Marine that's Corps. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a native of San Diego, but... Um, Two years ago, I grew up in Venezuela, uh, two years in Panama, and uh, my whole life I've been all, all around the world, traveling, learning the world. You know, it's very important to study 
Uh, how old rock. were you? How old were you when you moved to Venezuela? I was in third grade, so eight, nine years Did old. Did you go right into Spanish speaking yeah. school? Well, they had English and Spanish at the okay. same time. I didn't speak Spanish. That was actually a problem for me. And I actually learned Spanish fluently when I lived in Panama. I was in junior high. And that was, of course, during Did the you invasion. go to a Spanish school? Spanish speaking school? Or did it, you just learn it out in the streets? <laughs> I learned best from, let's say, free rolling. Let's say something. <laughs> talking, uh, saying something, you do it wrong, you actually learn how to uh, speak better. Uh, so I've actually been dropped off in countries and learned languages that way. It's the best way, actually. So you have no choice. Immersion. Immersion, exactly. Um, in Panama, it was a DOD, Department of Defense School. And that matter of fact, they used my junior high as a, as a hospital, a field hospital during the Panama invasion. And uh, that that's where I actually learned Spanish. Uh, I had survival Spanish when I was a little kid, but Panama. What years did you live in Panama? 89, 88. So I was in uh, seventh and eighth grade around that time. Seventh and eighth grade, you lived in Panama. The invasion went down in 89, with this, I think December of December 89. December 18th or 20th, I forget. Yeah. And you were like in it. It was yeah. it was happening around you. What happened was uh, Fort Amador, which actually means Fort Lover <laughs> in Spanish. <laughs> it's a Navy base. It's a, not a very big base. But it's the only base in Panama that was, they were trying to make a joint effort to have half Panamanian. Well, imagine I was in the middle of about eh, maybe 80 yards from where my house was down a hill. About 40 guys got massacred there. I and mean, the front gate to the base. Um, some PDF, the Panamanian Defense Forces, the police, military, same thing down there. They. They did, tried to uh, run a Marine roadblock Ooh, in a bus. That's not going to work out good for them. And uh, the Marines had 50 cal just... <laughs> and uh, the bus grinded to a halt, basically. It just didn't make it. So, yeah, well, I was right What there, did they right do there. with the families during that time? Well, So, like, what did your... I mean, your dad, dad did he have to work or did he... Yeah, he was, he was at Quarry Heights, which is the main, uh, you know, headquarters. So, he was uh, basically underground, this big rock. And uh, he could not tell us. So, he knew... But there's no way it was like top secret, whatever, compartmentalized, whatever you would say as far as he couldn't let us know. And they didn't, he didn't, didn't send you out of the country? It happened real fast. Yeah. They, because they, they killed a Marine Lieutenant, I believe his name was Lieutenant Paz. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was uh, maybe, yeah, that was not the reason. That was the straw that, not the straw, the boulder that broke the camel's back. For sure. And uh, sent in yeah, all our forces. And that caused me some problems, though, in, in school because... Uh, most of the kids were Panamanian kids. They were, they called them zonies. Their parents worked on the Panama uh, Canal, and so they were r- pretty well off. I went to decent school down there, and because of that, everyone, everyone from Panama had an uncle or a cousin who died, and so they see me. I was, by the way, I was a goofy little kid. <laughs> I'm not saying I wasn't tough. I was just goofy. So didn't speak Spanish. Uh, I was goofy. Uh, my social skills were a little bit awkward. Maybe they are to this day, actually. And uh, that's a recipe for disaster, <laughs> right? So, so that's actually Were probably, you scrawny? I was always, I was always tough, scrawny, but mm-hmm. I wasn't. I didn't get big until I was like 16, 17. Yeah. I started growing real fast. Yeah. And so you were getting scraps down there, basically, lots, because yeah. you were a gringo. Oh, gringo! They call this Yankee down there. Gringo didn't exist. That's oh, okay. Yankee. Everywhere was Yankee go home. It was graffiti <laughs> everywhere. Yankee, and then they spelled wrong, H O M. And Yankee was Y A N Q U I, spelled so, like Spanish. So the school was on base? No, no, it was, oh, it was out of town. Off base. You'd take a bus. Matter of fact, it was really stupid. Um, they actually had a, a failed coup about, I think, two weeks before the invasion. One of uh, Noriega, Manuel Noriega's mm-hmm. uh, top guys, generals, uh, successfully took him down. And. Uh, the loyalists to to Noriega came to his rescue, and the general surrendered. But that day, the country was on high alert, and we're going home on the bus back to get dropped off at, at well, to my base and other bases. And uh, the Panamanian uh, PDF, Panamanian Defense Force mm-hmm. guys, were in a machine gun nest. Just and I'm telling you, all these high school kids, I, I knew enough to just shut up. They opened the window and started taunting these guys, and these guys had. <laughs> What are the PKM? What, what, yeah, what, some kind what, of PKM. It, it was pointed kind of, right at us, and yeah. they were like looking at us. And I'm, oh, man, they didn't shoot us, but that was one of those things. You know, when you when you're young, you do stupid things. Apparently, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So I was right there. It was um, it was a crazy time. It was good though. I'm actually glad. Uh, and this is 
Oh, I was to tease Jocko, which is, I don't think he appreciates it, but I was like, Jocko, I saw war before you. <laughs> <laughs> true Technically, statement. it's yeah, true. true <laughs> Jocko yeah. was like, yeah, whatever. So I've seen one tenth of one percent or whatever. Of what but you, you were have. what, 10 years old? I was uh, 13. No, 13 12, years old? 12, okay, yeah. that's actually, you actually had more of an understanding. If you were a little bit younger, you yeah. know, you might not really get it. Yeah, but, but you had enough understanding to realize I'm, that you were in I, danger and stuff. Yeah, so for t- 24 hours, we were all alone, pitch dark, uh, Basically, I was just on the ground for three days, and uh, my mom filled up the bathtub with water, and I, I thought I was going to die. You know, really, and you know, you're 12 years old, you think a lot, but uh, that changed my life. Actually, just that, just to have that experience it was but actually you were a good thing. On base that was secured by it wasn't U.S. forces. It was becoming secured. It was the only base uh, in Panama that was half Panamanian. Across the street, it. down a hill, was the Panamanian officers. So it was a joint effort. In my situation, most of the um, uh, U.S. kids or like for, uh, Howard, they were in Rodman, they were over this hills, and mm-hmm. they, they heard gunshots and uh, you know concussions, whatever, but they didn't see anything. Right. They might have seen a few tracers, but yeah, I was right in the middle. Did any rounds hit your house? Uh, like like we, we are on top of a hill, so a few things uh, chipped the top of our roof, and, and for sure, if you walk by a window, someone could shoot you. So we didn't do that, of course. Mm-hmm. And we just drank out of a bathtub. And for it was just days. you and your, you and your mom sister, and your sister. My mom. And, and your dad was at work. My dad was, he was working. He, he must was have been, he must oh, have been he was, freaked out. Uh, our neighbor, we, we had giant yards between these houses. They're nice houses, actually. And the neighbor, she was all by herself, so it was just no kids. She ran over uh, across this, I'd say 100 yards. The, the, the yards were really wide, and she's knocking on our door. She came in, so I, she, we had a fourth. It was a young young lady. Mm-hmm. To me, it was an old lady. She was yeah, probably 25. Yeah. yeah. To me, that was an <laughs> old lady. Oldest person yeah. you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> she came Did in, your she, dad leave any <clears throat> weapons at the house? Nah, Dang. <laughs> <laughs> I'd been like, Dad, probably for come a reason, on. I would have strapped up and. <laughs> yeah, go get some. Not really, but yeah, my dad was, uh, yeah, it was just a sudden thing. It was a short notice, and he was, yeah. It happened at around, I don't know, 11. Before midnight, yeah. eleven thirty-five or something, and I thought it was firecrackers first, and, it, and it just shaking and flashes everywhere, just chaotic, chaotic. And, and then, did you finish out that school year? So that goes down in December. It, it was got halfway quelled through. pretty quickly. Yeah, let's say three days of, two days of very intense. First day was the most. Second was serious. Third was okay. And the next week was just like a mop-up operations. So still, for ten days, it was it was dangerous. But the first. Um, one of my teachers from my junior high got, got killed and uh, was just out in the street at the wrong time. And he was living in town, actually. That's mm-hmm. why he was in the wrong place, wrong time. And I don't know how yeah, he got shot, but I'm not, I'm not sure by who, but the wrong place, wrong time. So, uh, yeah, right in the middle of it. Yeah. We used to go down to Panama to do jungle training. Yeah. It was awesome, but it was after. I mean, this is in the 90s. So... But I, we went in and we'd look around, try and find you know where some of these battles took place, and and it was interesting. So then, when you you see, so did you finish out that school year? Halfway through, we moved to to San Diego. And okay, went to high school down here. And uh, then you went down. Now, when you were down there, did you start? Did you start getting interested in martial arts when you were getting picked on? I was doing karate. Karate. Now, I did wrestling for one year when I was eight years old. My dad made me do it, mm-hmm. and I didn't like it at the time, mm-hmm. but I'm really glad he made me do it yeah. because that helped me a lot in fights. Really it's a, a weird it's a weird thing with kids. Like, yeah. you know that it's good that he made you do it, but if he he might he, if he made you do it even more, I might, I might maybe just, you would just have hated it. High school, it. I'd be like, I'm not going to yeah. wrestle. High school, I wanted to wrestle, so it's good. So then you, we got to San Diego, and now and you also played football. Yes. Were you better at football or were you better at wrestling? Wrestling. I was a good tackler. I was one of the <laughs> top one or two best tacklers. Not the fastest guy. <laughs> I'm faster than average, but yeah, yeah. Uh, really, my body's not made for sprinting. It's made for grabbing people. Did you start? <laughs> did you, you? You are a mutant. Um, did you <laughs> yeah. start? Did you? Was that so? You? What grade was it that you wrestled in for one year? Was that like sixth grade or something? Uh, oh, you third, said you were third eight grade, years old. Third okay, grade, so, so third yeah, grade, nine years old, maybe. So now your freshman year in high school is the first year that you actually started wrestling. Freshman, I skipped tenth grade because I wanted to focus on weights and football. Mistake, but Hell it's okay. Yeah. Uh, and then eleventh and twelfth grade, I wrestled, and I was varsity eleven and twelve, and I was so regional. So you did that well without that much experience. I don't know why, but for me, well, I do know why because you're, <laughs> you, you know, you just joked about being like. Uh, you know, a, a mutant grappler, but you actually literally have 
like you were designed to grapple <laughs> I'm serious man uh, so yeah so could and be, that that's proof right there be. is that you is that you you wrestled you know once when you were eight years old and then you wrestled in freshman year and then I mean there's Skip kids are, there's kids that wrestle their whole lives in there uh, that you're wrestling against yes and how did you do uh, I was re- like, say South Bay regional champion I took third in county um, I wasn't that good until 1920. For some reason, the submission arts, sambo and jujitsu. There was guys who would beat me in high school. Wait, you said 1920? 1920. 19 or 20. Oh, okay. Got well, it, around got that it. time, I I got athletic and coordinated. I was kind of clumsy when I was 17. So there was kids that beat me. One guy beat me, almost tech followed me, which means Oof. almost got 15 to two on me or whatever. Yeah. He was from a local high school, and I faced him in a tournament after high school, and I pinned him in 30 seconds. So I don't know why I just took so off you were like a late reason. late bloomer, and yes. also you have this natural gift that you hadn't started to hone yet, and once you started to hone it, it just started to make sense. It was the brain. submission that got me really interested, and uh, just okay. The rules so and so where did that come that from? Made sense. It was sambo, right? Sambo was your introduction. Was to before submission. I did jujitsu. Yes, sambo is for those who don't know. It's it's a Russian grappling style. I would roughly compare it maybe in the middle of judo and jujitsu because they they stress a little more wrestling. Than judo, and a little more submissions. It it's in the middle. Let's say. Yeah. Uh, so I'd I was say that it's first. it's sort of like in the middle of wrestling, judo and jujitsu. Like yeah. you got to put all three of them together. It's like a collage. Because you because you wear a jacket. Jacket shorts. But you wear and shorts shoes. and shoes. Yeah. Which is which is literally a combination and, of everything. <laughs> you can go for footlocks, whereas in judo you can't go for footlocks. Uh, you can go for a single leg, double leg, where in judo you can't do that. So. Um, yeah, where'd you hear about Sambo? My was my off-season coach named uh, Jerry Matsumoto down at my high school, Hilltop High School in Chula Vista here in San Diego. And in off-season, he was teaching this thing called Sambo. This is right, right before UFC one. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I, what's that stuff with the jacket? What's this? And they said, Oh, this is a submission. What is a submission? I was like seventeen. Oh, you can get your arm broken. I'm like, and I told myself, and this is something that this is one of the not few, several things Jocko and myself share, we have in common. I told myself at age 17, even though I was uncoordinated, I said, that's scary. And I, now I have to do it. <laughs> I got to do it now. If I don't do it now, I'm, I'm a, I'll feel ashamed of myself. So I did it. For some reason, I, guys that could beat me in Greco or, or freestyle, I could submit them. I don't know why. I have no idea why. But it was making sense for me. And uh, then I went to Jiu-Jitsu at Fabio Santos. <laughs> <laughs> and and you were you you say like you were naturally good at sambo, and you were, and you you were like the national champion, two time yeah, national yeah. champion in sambo, right? Yeah, it's amateur at that time. It wasn't really super popular, but that that prepared me in the American rules of sambo because the athletic commission or the the union was uh, no twisting submissions, no chokes. So straight foot lock, straight knee lock, and straight arm lock. So you get good at those That's three the submissions. That's only three submissions? Back then, yes. Because wow. those were the days where they thought, oh, like Steven Seagal grabs your neck and breaks it. You know, You'll die. So, oh, you <laughs> get choked, you die. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, by the way, that ruins war movies. When I see the guy sneak it behind the guy yeah, with the machine gun, <laughs> chokes him, and the guy's like done for the movie. I'm like, he's going to wake up in 10 seconds yeah. and shoot you. <laughs> so kind of, I have to kind of separate myself at that moment. But, but yeah, at that time, Right at the time UFC won to peel thought. So it's important yeah. for people to know that there's a key element here in Sambo is that the foot lock, the straight foot lock, and the knee, the straight knee lock was one was the two of the three submissions you were allowed to do. Roger. And you were good at them. <laughs> the the uh, when I studied Higgs would tell you this. Uh, oh, and our good friends Jeff Higgs. Uh, I came in there and I actually was submitting guys and. Uh, but they didn't like that because yeah. I was a so- I was a sambo kid. Oh, like, that's right. That's right. You're the sambo, sambo kid, kid for a while. Yeah, for a while. I used to get people in bear hugs from the guard and make them tap. <laughs> I was a, I was a mean little bastard. <laughs> I just cry. <laughs> I made a. Well, I don't think he's listening, but if he is, forgive me. But his name was John. That's why he was the assistant coach for Fabio, and he was blue belt four stripes. I came in. I got him in full guard bear hug. He's ah! he, he tapped. He screamed, and then he went. He was crying. <laughs> Didn't pop my back from the guard. <laughs> That's all I knew. So well, I didn't learn to pass again. You have some. You have some mutated um, structure that is meant Maybe. more for grappling than anything. It's very odd, and and it's, 
and <laughs> and I yes. remember you you told me you would like arm lock people in their garden. You'd be in their oh, garden. Yeah, you yeah. would arm lock them. Yeah, they'd reach for an underhook. I'd lock my arms and posture. They <laughs> they'd, 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 they'd say, "I didn't know you could arm lock someone from the garden." I'm like, "Well, the arms there." And they're like, "Well, I was taught that's wrong." And uh, well, eventually I learned that that's not the best way to do it. Yeah. But, yeah. And yeah. so then it was it UFC one where you said, "Oh, jujitsu. What's going on with that?" Yeah, because. That was the time when chokeholds were like lethal, like you're gonna die. Well, you realize, not really. The guy, you know, the second USC, no one died. Third USC, and chokeholds actually work. And nowadays, people will, can sometimes say, "Oh, jitsu is is not the most. It's really it's a base. It's a prerequisite you have to have yeah. to even be competitive." Right. So, yeah, it's very effective. Very effective. And of course, the sport has evolved technically over the years. If you look at uh, technology and technique are kind of similar because they develop over time. The technique of boxing now is different in the 80s, and that's different from the 50s. Football looks different now than back then. Jiu-Jitsu is the same thing. Yeah. Right? All kinds of things happening right now that no one even envisioned back in 1995. And it compounds faster, right? Like if you watch how fast technology's gotten, has improved, if you watch the jiu-jitsu curve, it's like the new moves, you know. Back when we when we started, there'd be like a new move. The it would be, plot that yeah, it would be move. like, oh my god, this is crazy that this could someone came up with something. And now there's, you know, some blue belt tonight came up with like a sick uh, <laughs> variation of a move, and and that's just the way it works. So yeah. it's like everyone's better. I I started eight months. Be- I don't know, maybe one year, maybe six months before you, and so you for sure had already joined at this time. But the Umo Plata was a brand new move. Yeah. And if someone did that at a tournament, I was like, oh, look, he's doing a brand new move. Yeah. And then we'd look, take the, the VHS yeah, <laughs> camcorders sure. and look, look at it. And it was like, oh, that was the highlight. That was like the Baron Bolo or, you know, now it's the Lake Locks, of course. So, so, did, yeah. what, was it, so was it the UFC that when you watched the UFC, you were like, oh, okay, I got to find a jiu-jitsu gym and you yes. opened up the yellow pages or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> no one knows about <laughs> yellow pages. What's that? Yeah, <laughs> no. Get the I, know, I remember phone. Fabio yeah. used to have Fabio had an ad in the San Diego I Leader. Saw it. Yeah, that's I saw that's it. like he was like this. That's where I that's where I remember the Fabio Santos ad in the San Diego Reader. I remember seeing that, but it was Higgs that brought me down. Yeah, because Higgs had been training there for a while. So you you, I mean, you were good fast, right? <laughs> Sometimes, like <laughs> I'll think, man, I'm really faltering here uh, nothing's happening and then next month I realize I'm twice as good as I was yeah and I'll go what happened and then I feel like I'm losing ground I think that's because you're learning sometimes you you learn a little bit but because it's something new yeah you might be better you actually go down in performance yeah because you're you don't have that down yet. Yeah. And then, of course, you get it down and the higher level of technique, now you're up to here. I so explain like that a, to businesses a lot. Like businesses yeah. want to implement a new process and I'm like, you have to tell the people that out of the gate, you're going to get less efficient. When you implement a new process, you're going to get less efficient. Then once you master the new process, you'll get more efficient. It's the same thing with jiu-jitsu. You start implementing a new move, you're going to get worse. And then once you master the move or you get good at the move, then you'll start getting better again. Did we Jocko so, real fast? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna lend to you an analogy for that. That's very simple. I heard nowadays cur- kids don't even learn cursive now. I heard that I don't know, but you learn printing, and a few years you're writing your name. You they put glitter on it. You give it to your mom. She puts it in the fridge. So it's a little kid writing, but sure. after a few years you're writing your name and you could write. They say we're gonna learn cursive now. Well, your cursive looks way more jacked up than your printing, but it's a more advanced form of writing. So you get that down. And then back then, by the way, there's no typing in high school. That was junior, or it was college. So in college, you learn typing. Initially, you're just like, mm-hmm. you're slower than you would write. Mm-hmm. But eventually, we learn typing. See, so your your performance declines yeah, yeah. until you get a more advanced thing down in your head. And all of a sudden, you can type 50 words, 60 words a minute. Mm-hmm. That's a more advanced, more efficient way of typing or writing. So that's a good way I express that idea to people who may not be in business. That simple way like that. Makes yeah. sense? Yeah, That's that does make sense. I, I'm trying to think. Good analogy. So Good analogy. Um, so we, you and I, I don't know why, but you and I immediately started training together like super hard all the time. You were you were one of the guys. Like I mentioned, if I say that's kind of scary, oh, I got to do it. Also, if I say it would it would, it would suck to be mounted, 
uh, all all purpose start mounted. And if we were all out of bounds, most people, Jocko's one of the few guys that if we were all out of bounds and, and I have a good position on him, he will insist we start in the, and I'll, I'll argue just actually like, no, put your arm back where it was because I actually want to have it reset to a, a, what's harder for me. So if I go out of bounds, uh, that, I think that's why. And the uh, first time I saw you, Higgs, he's like, I have a friend named Jocko, man, he, he gets involved. He, he's, he's just kind of like, man, you, you'll know. You, you, you'll see him, you'll just know. And I'm like, okay. So I knew you were coming in, and uh, you walked in, and, and you were like, Roger, yeah. And, and <laughs> first day, you got you got arm locked, and, and no emotion, just you just sit like that, turn it, <laughs> walk, and, and just... And it's a, that, so I was like, hey, it's, it's, it's pretty hardcore, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, it's, but you it's, were training hard. You were training hard. I was training hard too. That's yeah. why. Yeah, I, I remember. I just remember like almost immediately I was training with you a lot. Maybe it's because we were, I don't know. We would we would spend three hours after Saturday yeah. talking on the mat about things and techniques. Like literally two hours of open mat, three hours of just, eh, more technique mm. on every Saturday. That's Saturday. Of course, yeah. times were different back then. Yeah. But I was going crazy thinking about the fact and I, there's and so I don't know if this is you guys can tell me if this is insecurity or what but I like Higgs came to my house and Higgs was oh. now Higgs had just got his purple belt and he came to my house and he well he called me and he's like hey you want to train he's like hey you want to train and I said <laughs> yeah I said yeah come on over man and you know I was bigger than Higgs and he was long and he, he's, his legs go up to like his sternum. So his legs, he's like, a, he's a mutant too. And triangle. Yeah. And so he came over and we went in the grass across the street from my house yeah, and he just days. worked oh, yeah. me over. And I was like, and so again, you tell me if this is insecurity, but I was like, I never want to have another man be able to impose his will on me like that. That is not the I way I want to go through life. that's a healthy way to look at things. <laughs> so by the time, so I literally went down to Fabio's the next day and yeah. and signed up. Signed up. Yeah. And he's like, do you want to try a class? And I was like, no, no. I just want to sign up unlimited classes, 165 <laughs> bucks a month here, take my money, train. And I remember, oh, I remember you couldn't go immediately into the advanced class. You yeah. had to just take the beginner's class. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I talked to him or I told him like, hey, I can't get here until later. Sometimes can I just there do we go. it? And he and he was pretty cool. You know, he just said, yeah. And then and so those times where, you know, I just wanted to learn as much as I possibly, possibly, possibly could because I didn't want to be uh, at the disposal of some other human beings will. Yeah, it's an awful feeling. There are some people that don't like that feeling until they avoid it completely. Yeah. 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 That's actually the more common. That's the more yeah. common reaction. The more common reaction is, oh, I don't like that situation because I get dominated and I have to submit to another man or woman, by the way. Yeah. I have to submit to this other man or woman and I hate that, so I'm just never gonna get in this situation. The problem is, as we know in life, you can't always avoid those situations and those situations can present themselves and you can't do anything about it. So, so you and I just started training like maniacs. Yeah, and absolutely. The thing I was thinking about for for some reason, even in the beginning, we did no gi. We would take our gis off sometimes, yeah, which we would get yelled at sometimes. Yeah, and and it. and for me, luckily, I would teach guys in the teams, and I would I just would always wear no gi. I would just always wear a t-shirt and cami pants. That was like the standard. I was like, if you want to train, yeah, t-shirt, cami pants, barefoot. And so I was almost immediately training no gi because I was training at the team and I would tr be training guys even though we weren't highly skilled. But I was at least understanding that there were some nuanced differences because I didn't have the wrestling background that you had. Yeah. That's good because, you know, if you rely upon the uniform only and that's only how you train, no uniform, how are you going to be? Yeah. Yeah. So then the other big thing here is, I mean, we were competing a lot back then. Yeah. We were competing a lot. And those old school jujitsu tournaments were freaking awesome back in the day. <laughs> they were they were super um they were crazy. They remember were crazy jujitsu tournaments match, back in the day. The Armenian guy and there was a riot. <laughs> Oh, it was and it was it, it was, was crazy. It was five hundred Brazilians and like twenty Armenian guys. And by the way, my coach, he had a thing with that coach, and and 
I'm not going to say what he said, but it wasn't very nice. The guy actually took me down 2 0 and had me in a foot, like almost broke my foot. But I escaped and I won 18 to 2. The guy was tough, but I beat him. And Fabio's coaching me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> He's coaching me. And of course, the other coach is in Armenian. Since I don't speak Armenian. But uh, for some reason, that guy is not an official jiu jitsu guy, more like a judo, sambo, whatever right. variant. And right afterwards, yeah, right? and because of that, there was a riot and yep. jiu jitsu, yeah, jiu jitsu, and, and mm-hmm. it was because of my match. Hundreds of <laughs> hundreds of people <laughs> chanting jiu jitsu, and the judo, the the uh, Armenian guys were, but they were actually they were great dudes. They yeah, were they hard were awesome. fighters, yeah. and like yeah. it was like the Caro Parisian crew. Yeah. It was all those guys. They were wicked hard fighters. They were tough. they were tough as hell, and they were and they were. Uh, connected to Judo Jean LaBelle yes, too. Yes, that's right. Yep. So it was yep. like total respect, but... I had respect for the, him. Yeah, there yeah. was respect. I think the, the disrespect came more from the Brazilian side. <laughs> and, well, I mean, <laughs> well, we were certainly associated with the Brazilians because we had a Brazilian coach and we were doing yeah. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. But, uh, yeah, there was some there was some mayhem. But the, That guy, Car- he's in Caro. Yeah. And actually, he's like a mathematician now. He's just, yeah. just like, I'm not, I'm not going to fight anymore. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a doctorate. You know, just... <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. find some strange people in the sport. I mean, in yeah. a good way. That guy, he broke two people's feet. This is back in the day when mm, they let it was yeah, a little more hardcore. Thing was, it was, yeah. it was, uh, it was, it was disrespectful f- to to tap to a footlock. Like, yes, you know, yes. like oh, you can't tap to that. Uh, you know, those don't that's work almost. Technical. You know, that's yeah. not technical. You shouldn't tap to that. So guys would just get their foot broken by these. You know, because again, yeah. look at Judo Jean, Jean LaBelle. I mean, his his repertoire of super strong of yeah. of submissions is freaking brutal. crazy, brutal and brutal. And so all those guys were coming in with that whole game, plus their whatever sambo background they had, and there were some good good competitions, in, yeah. and it was total mayhem. But so I was thinking, like the Machado Invitational, which I think you won that like yeah. four or five times. You no, were the champion. Sure. Yeah, I think four times. Uh, the Gracie National, you won that a bunch of times. Yeah, you were there. That's right. Yeah, the Grappler's Quest back yes. in the day. That's still going too. Yes, Grappler's yes. Quest. The remember the grappling games. Remember neutral grounds. That's that's the last <laughs> one I had. The last one I had was neutral grounds. That's neutral the story. grounds. That was in the hood. <laughs> it, it was, was in, in the a cage. hood in L.A. Yeah, and and, and, and the cage. <laughs> someone didn't finish the the fence for. Uh, Correctly, it cut you. The fen- it was. <laughs> I mean, it, it was it straight was, it was, cage sure, match like yeah. WWE. Style. It was in the back in Dudes the hood bleeding. in this backyard, and there's like 200 guys that are just like that, ah, yep. yelling. Uh, no one's throwing anything, but almost. It's like an MMA style, like like environment, mm. but not punches that day. And there's Rico Rodriguez was there. Higgs. Yeah. I, I, I you could be, yeah. Did, yeah, I went against Rico Rodriguez. Yeah, I lost. Um, you. Didn't you go against? Well, him as well. Against? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's see though. Oh my good. Yeah, I had two matches. Higgs also. We both won. He beat yeah. uh, Hickson's guy. Bo Bo, Hirsch, yeah, yeah, he was. He was like a beast. He was. He was one of the. the that the was upper an incredible names. match because Higgs, Higgs was kind of getting. You know, Higgs was a lot smaller than him. Well, maybe not a lot, but he was thirty or forty pounds smaller than him. Higgs has a little bit. Of, he's he's. Uh, very confident, but he's a little more reserved. Yeah, and Bo is a little more l- l- physically intimidating looking. Yeah, he's a goatee, and just big yeah. guy, and Higgs just. And they went at it, and then yeah. Higgs got him in a triangle, triangle arm lock. Yeah, yeah, That's that right. was that was nice. And who? Yeah, you had, didn't you have a guy that like wouldn't give up? Was that you? Oh no, that was Carl, the same guy against Rico. Oh, and he, that's pa- right. he was out. He, was he just went unconscious, but not just unconscious. Where you wake I'm up talking, like thirty seconds later, unconscious, and, unconscious uh, yeah. from a grappling match. Bro. His coach is like, "Oh, he's fine." He's, I'm like, "He's okay." He's like, "Oh, he's fine." He's like, "He's, just, he's not moving. He's not moving." And I'm like, "I think I see his chest moving." Also, like, he's not dead. Uh, I'm like, "Are you sure?" He's, I know he's fine. He's trying to pick him. The guy's like limp. The guy's so tough. Didn't tap that head yeah. arm, but. Match was over. Yeah. He had him head on for like two minutes. Oh, that Armenian guy was savage. Tough. And that was when yeah. Rico Rodriguez weighed 300, 300 pounds. pounds. Yes. Yeah. 300 pounds. And I was 170. One, yeah, I used to be 170. Yeah. I faced him. I got to his back four times and he, he finally got me God. in the head and arm. And 300 pounds is no joke. He, he didn't <laughs> no. get me in the head and arm. 
uh, you and I, I remember you and I oh, on this, on this like random piece of carpet rolled out in an oh, alley yeah. before the fight and we're, and you're, you and me are just drilling because we knew the head and arm was his move. And so you're just going head and arm and, and I'm getting out of it and getting out of it and getting out of it. But he got me in a, um, was it Guy? Yes. It he, was yeah. Guy. He, he had spandex on though. Yeah. He had, he had, <laughs> he had spandex a, bottoms <laughs> and a Guy top and he, uh, he got me in a, in an Ezekiel from my yes. half guard. Yeah. Yeah, which you never, you, you know, you know the learning phases of jujitsu when oh, yeah. you go. I didn't know that would work. That was one of those for me. I was like, I didn't know that would work. I didn't think it would work. Like you can't put an Ezekiel on me, my half guard, and then it, it did. worked. Yeah. By the way, did. just just a side, just a tangent. We're walking to the venue. We parked two blocks down, and Jocko had these sunglasses on, and there was these two ghetto dogs. Like, and these were. Pissed oh, off yeah, dogs were barking, and Jocko went like this, and he stared the dog, and the dogs went <laughs> like that. <laughs> it's funny because I'm like 19, you're, you're probably like 25, and the dogs they were they were, they were real confident, and you gave them that the devil stare, and they they, they, they kind of backed up. They were still barking, but it, and they needed this. <laughs> there was a, there was a fence between us, but yeah, yeah. first time I seen a man just punk two dogs with his eyeballs <laughs> yeah, it was awesome <laughs> kind of motivated me for the match actually you know what was pretty cool so this is one of my favorite Dean Lester stories uh -oh. you were going against again it was one of these crazy tournaments total mayhem and so we're talking this is like 90 I don't know 97 Eight, nine, 98 okay. something yeah. like that total mayhem and you would always get well you'd always be in the finals or the semifinals, you know, on your way to the finals, because you would win every tournament. It was freaking ridiculous. Well, not everyone, but yeah. Mm, okay, you, not everyone, most, but yeah. most of them. <laughs> I would do the absolute too, as so I usually win my division and the absolute. Yeah, yeah, no, it was awesome, and I would do do my best, which wouldn't be as good as Dean. Wow, and <laughs> and so, anyways, Dean's in this match, and he's going against this Brazilian kid, and they are they're going at it, and the Brazilian guy's real super fiery. Right, super fiery oh, yeah. Brazilian guy, slapping the and mat. he's going crazy, and and you know it's really, it's 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 head touching, but it's like a head slap. You can hear the slaps happen, yeah, and you yeah. can see he, this guy's going all crazy, and he goes after Dean like super hard, trying to get a takedown, and they fly across the mat, and he's pushing, and Dean's sprawling, boom, and they go way out into the stands. <laughs> And I'm I'm the side like in his corner, mm -hmm. and so I just see the both of them disappear into the crowd, mm -hmm. and the crowd's going crazy, and it gets quiet, and the guy comes out, and he's all going crazy, he's all on fire, and he's all ah, he's like, come on, let's go, and he goes to the middle of the he mat, smacks he, the and mat he, start, like he gets on his knees and starts slamming the mat, ah, like he's just so crazy, and I and then I look at and then I look back at the crowd where the hole was where they came, oh. and Dean comes walking yeah. out, he looks. Totally completely literally he looks like the Terminator he comes walking out no expression on his face comes walking out to the middle of the mat and then he arm locked the guy like 20 seconds later and just yeah. the guy was <laughs> yeah. that, that was, was pretty day. awesome that was good and then uh, in in that time period right is when you do the ADCC trials actually we both did the ADCC I trials in 2000 and three. Uh, well, two thousand two, I won the the trials, and then I ended up in Brazil. Two thousand one, I went to Abu Dhabi. I went to Abu Dhabi. I competed. I didn't win that year. Oh, I was okay. Purple, I was a purple belt. Oh, dang. We we did uh, we did several big trial tournaments. Uh, some that didn't materialize into actual events. We did several of these things. Abu Dhabi qualifiers. That I think that was the first one. Two thousand one, two thousand two. I think it was two thousand two. Yeah, and it was here in San Diego, right? Yeah, and at I that had, like nice health yeah, club. Yeah, the hotel. And and and, and uh, Kenny Florian was there. Oh uh, yeah, Kenny yeah, Florian yeah. was there, and he was super cool. And uh, yeah, and I went against um, Big Country, Roy so, Big Country Nelson, and I think you were he division beat up, me yeah. like four to two or something. Yeah, and then you had just the wars. I had uh, this. All American wrestler, I don't know, good wrestler named Nate Ducharme, and he he slammed my knee. I, I found out later that uh, uh, he does it on purpose. He lets you get the back, and he he dives and spears your knee in the ground, and it damages your knee actually. So I finished the choke. I registered impact. I registered like that. That kind of hurt, but I I didn't let go of the choke, and he tapped, and I was like, my knee doesn't feel correct, and it, my knee swelled up like this, like mm -hmm. double the size, and I put two I put two knee sleeves over it, and I'm um, like. 
I don't know why that somehow focused me. I didn't. I didn't go. Oh, I'm hurt. Oh, this is my excuse to quit. I went. I went. You know, it would be really cool. This is something I did in you, 2003. Psychologically, you like being the underdog kind. Yeah, of. yeah, yeah. I have less pressure. I think it's, most people like to be the the favorite. I like. I like to be the one that's like, oh, that guy can't win. And so I had that the, the guy from um, what's his name from Hensel Gracie's. Uh, from New York, and he attacked my leg. Yeah, went after it, and and he had me straight in the lock. And, and the ref is about to stop. I looked at the ref, and I went like this, <laughs> and he's shaking his legs. He played like college ball. The college the guy was real athletic. Uh, Patterson, Jamal Patterson, he was oh, tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got to his back, choked him, and I see in the corner like you're like <laughs> this evil grin just like shines <laughs> through the crowd. I'm like, yeah. And then Layman was in the finals, and I won by points that one. Went to Abu Dhabi, and, or went to Brazil. That, that's yeah. also when. That's also when. Eddie Bravo was at the same yeah, trials. Right. He yeah. won the trials yeah. too. Yeah. So that was that was kind of a big deal. And Dave Terrell won his. And Dave Terrell yeah. won his. Yeah. And the one who won the heavyweight was some country boy. I don't know. I forget his name. Yeah. And so we went down to Brazil, and Eddie Eddie took third, but he beat uh, Holy Grace. Yeah. That was yeah. A, that, that that got more attention than me winning the absolute. Yeah. For no, some that was well that was a big thing. Not yeah. for some reason. I mean, yeah. The, 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 reason, yeah, the reason is the spoiler. Yeah. And. Um, but, but yeah, you went and won the absolutes, which is, you know, it's freaking insane that you won the absolutes. Jocko trained me so hard. Remember the oh, seven yeah, ups on the hard. on the stairs? <laughs> seven ups. These, <laughs> damn seven. I'm like oh, seven ups. But seven ups is not like what it sounds like. Uh, pop. I mean, that's seven times up the stairs in under what twenty seconds. Yeah, if you don't get like twenty that. seconds, you do it again. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I, that's my I, my imitation of Jocko. Jocko would do this evil Navy SEAL tactic on me where Dean jump up hit the bar and I'm like okay keep going keep going one two I'm like when are we gonna stop I don't know Jocko has some fictitious number in his head that <laughs> I have no idea so, but if I slow down it'd be like 99 100 101 I slow down 100 99 98 I'm like I'm losing my ground I can't stop now so I'm like, ah. and the stairs was like yeah up and down seven times it wasn't a long stairway no, no. maybe three but it was like you have to be up and down in less than 30 seconds yeah. or you have to do it Again. X amount of times and yeah, I got in good shape for that. Yeah, then there was, was beams up, up in the top floor. This is when we were at City Boxing <laughs> in downtown San Diego. There was beams and pipes and like the beams were t 14 inches taller than the pipes up that you had to jump. So I'd be like on the beam, 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 pipe, pipe. You know, when he was getting exhausted, I'd be like pipe because it was a little yeah. bit lower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you were in sick shape and we would just grab that at that time. So, uh, at that time, I was going to college. Yeah. So I, all I had to do, I, I wasn't, I was detached from the SEAL teams yeah. from 2000 to 2003, and all I was doing was going to college. And all we did was train jujitsu, actually. Yeah. And we would just train and just train more and then just train after that. Jocko's such a maniac. He's one of the few guys I'd say, hey, you want to train at six in the morning tomorrow? Um, we'll be there at 530 <laughs> because why not? Why be late, you know? <laughs> How about nine thirty, nine o'clock at night? Yeah, sure. Uh, no, um, he's, he'll do it, no problem. Mm -hmm. Jocko helped me cut weight one time. Remember this? Uh, I was fighting at one eighty five for the belt, the king of the cage, and uh, two weeks before the the fight. This is of course a fight now. Uh, Jocko was like, Dean, you look um, kind of muscular. Like, are you you know say muscular? You said uh, you're looking a little beefy, heavy. Like, what's up? And I go, I well, you know, fat. Yeah, it probably <laughs> did. You're looking a little heavy, buddy. And I went. You go, how much do you weigh? I go, I'm 218. And, and he went, Dean, um, what weight are you fighting in in two weeks? I went 185. And uh, Jocko went, really? Um, don't you understand that 33 pounds is like an issue? And I, oh, well, my friend, uh, this is, yeah. <laughs> I was 24, 25 years old. My friend Tony is like, oh, yeah, you, you lie down in the bathtub of full bet, Epsom salt, and you lose 20 pounds like in an hour, no problem. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Jocko's like, did you try it yet? I'm like, no. Dean, you mother lazy. Get some Epsom salt. Try it tonight. Let me know. I'm like, okay. I'm all confident. I go get Epsom salt. I get this <laughs> alcohol, like rub me alcohol, pour in the bath. I lie down. 30 minutes later, I get out. I lost like half a pound. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, not 20, half a pound. I go, I call Jocko. Jocko's like, what happened? And I'm like, or, or input or something, something, something like, some military like, report. like, report, yes. <laughs> Reconnaissance, whatever. And uh, 
<laughs> field report. <laughs> so, so I, I'm like, Chaco, how much did you lose, you mother? And I'm like, uh, uh, I think I was like three quarters of. I think I, I, I think <laughs> I exaggerated. Rounded up. Uh, three quarters. Yeah, I was like, uh, like you mother. Maybe at the beach by my house is where you saw both. Houses, I don't know. Yeah, on Long Branch. Yeah, and I'm at six in the morning, and I go there, and Chaco's like, you know, next two weeks you could have like a can of tuna per day and we're gonna run and three hours Jocko ran it with me by the way most people don't do that they'll like they'll, they'll yeah. watch you run he ran me we ran all around Point Loma in by the way we're going to the beach and I'm like oh we're gonna run on the beach Jocko just over the little sea wall so run at the beach getting kind of close to the water and uh, in the water I'm like okay <laughs> so I go in the water Jocko's swimming on these cliffs and I'm, I'm like I'm trying to catch up with him I'm not a seal I can swim I, I'm, not, I'm a strong swimmer but I'm not he, was, he had like, like flippers he didn't have flippers on I thought he did it though. Like he's out in the surf going around these cliffs. I'm like, okay, I've done that before, but he's, he's ahead of me. I'm like tired. I'm like, this sucks uh, because I'm already not eating and uh, whatever. Plus, uh, I was younger. So, you know, when you're younger, things suck more. Then when you get older, you realize it didn't suck that bad yeah, because you're yeah. older, you have this experience. So, if, I'm, if you're around all the way to Mission Beach, we're across the bridge, we swam through that, well, not a very clean river to swim through, but yeah. the San Diego River, we swam through there. A three hour run, not every day. But maybe for two weeks all the time and I, I I lost 18 pounds and then of course I lost 15 pounds of water and I made the weight that was terrible that, that was hard but uh that yeah, was hard and I fought a tough guy too so yeah it was and you won yeah yeah it was a it was a good day you know what I gotta go back to the uh when you won ADCC in Brazil because that was freaking amazing uh so there's a couple things number one one of the guys that you faced was a guy named Pedro Pano Pedro Pano and, yeah yeah and and I was reading, so I couldn't go down because I was in college at the time, and it was right in final exams. I couldn't, I literally could not go down with you, and so you were down there by yourself in yeah. Brazil, in enemy territory. Yeah, and you're down there, and so I'm reading. There's something called the, it's the underground. It's yeah, it's the yeah. it's the mm it's the mixed martial arts dot com. It's the UG, which also has the OG. So it's it's an old forum which still exists to this day. It used to be called Submission Fighting, and actually. Yeah. You and I, when I was on deployment, like way back then, you and I would communicate. We didn't have email, so yeah, you and I yeah. would communicate on submissionfighting.com in the threads. And uh, oh, the struggle! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I'm reading. So what they're doing is someone is translating, like an, some kind of automatic translation, watching, and they're yeah. posting what it's saying. And so it was like a literal the Americans uh, in trouble. Yeah, no, it was yeah. a literal it was a literal translation. And so paid upon means cloth foot, is that right? Yeah, but it's actually a, it's a cartoon, a cartoon character, character or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, this guy paid upon was a guy that our instructor Fabio would, um, he's unbeatable. He yeah. he he cuz paid upon was this massive guy and he was a sick black belt in jiu-jitsu and he's like, "Yeah, this guy will never be beaten because he's so massive and he's so good at jiu-jitsu." No one could score a point on him yeah. actually. He was just a dominator. And how is anyone going to beat somebody that's that big and that skilled? And so Dean, so I'm reading, I remember I'm sitting in the parking lot of, of Home Depot for some reason, and the match is going on, and I'm reading, I'm refreshing it on my uh, phone, and it's popping up, and it's slow, it's like back in the day, right, the reception's the bad, and I'm reading it, and, it, and I remember this thing, it says, the, it says, the cloth foot has a choke in deep. The American must have a tube to his lungs because he is not <laughs> tapping. And I was like, yes, Dean. And then you beat him, and uh, man, you beat, and and then you went on a one. That was a that was a big deal, man. Yeah, he beat. I mean, he beat Verdum that day, and then, God. well, in their own division. And uh, but he cheated in that match. Oh, by the way, Peter Pan was the only guy he wouldn't shake my hand. You, mm, not talking smack. He just wasn't a very gracious. Uh, you know. By the way, you can tell a lot about a person. How how they conduct themselves when they win and also how they lose. So True. by the way, he was smashing me when the points didn't count. But he, he was you know, forty pounds heavier than me. So big guy, six foot six, six foot seven. He's and, six foot six. Yeah, big guy. Dang. Yeah. It's two hundred sixty seventy pounds. Yeah, and uh, but he he uh, he he won against Verdum, but he cheated. I, I saw the tape and he put his arm on the. Uh, uh, he was in a submission out of bounds. He cheated when they restarted. So, oh, the, so the crowd, so the crowd was, was angry. He was in a submission, about to get. He was tapped. in trouble. He wasn't. In, but oh, okay. it, he was on the verge of it being locked in. But he kind of moved his arm, so he was, he started in a f more favorable position. Uh, so that was the one match where the Brazilians were kind of cheering for me. Otherwise, no, they were cheering <laughs> for the other Brazilians. But so when I won, the, uh, people were, 
We're and you like beat happy. so who was the first match against? First you? match was Nate Marquardt. Nate Marquardt. And I got him by Kamira. Tough guy. Yeah, awesome. God, that was brutal. Yeah, and, and then, uh, then Salo Hibero. And then Salo. And Salo was already the five-time world champion at the time. Yeah. I was a brown belt, so it was kind of, for me, it was weird. I I had less pressure in the harder division uh, where I was the last guy. I was number 16 of the world. Um, it was, I don't know why, it just... Well, you like I said, you like to be the underdog. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I wish I could describe what happened that day because if I could replicate that... I don't know what happened. Eric Paulson said, he said, uh, Dean had a golden aura around him. I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see auras yet, but I'm working there. I'm, I'm, one day I want to see or uh, like that gift. Yeah. But, and so these guys, uh, I mean, Salo's like, like you said, five Salo's time. War. I mean, he's one, just one, one of the best in his, also his brother, John G. In Jean-Gi history, a, both awesome, of them. Awesome. Unbelievable yeah. jujitsu players. And then you, and then it was Peter Pano. And then in the finals, it was Cacareco. It was Cacareco. Alejandro Ferreira. And he... Uh, he's a beast. Yeah, he, he's known for... Uh, he actually was a good sport, but he, he he had the reputation that Tokino has today. He would hurt people. He actually footlocked Zhangji that day. He guillotined Comprito that day, and he beat Fabrizio Verdum, also just by coincidence, the same guy, 8-0, 5-0. And then Fabrizio beat Pedapano in the third, fourth match. Oh. So, so that was kind of like, uh, you know... I guess his payback, you know. So he won. So uh, it was a good day. And the finals, I was told this guy has the best guilt in the world and the best footlocks in Brazil for sure. And he's the best wrestler in Brazil. So I'm like, I thought about it like, oh, it's guilt. oh be careful, it's guilty. And I thought to myself, I'm not trying to act courageous, nothing like that. But I said to myself, that would really suck. And I go, I like kind of, maybe I could feel how his guillotine is, you know. And so I grabbed his legs and he went for it. And I was like, let me see how it is. Yeah. I, not that I wanted, yeah, I kind of, I wanted to escape it. It's kind of weird. Uh, and, and he went to play with the fire. And I was, yeah, and I was in it, and he really, I hear, I hear the crowd yelling, and I hear the crowd get silent because he, he has me so tight, not over my ears, but I'm getting choked, really. Somehow, I'm, I guess I'm slightly resistant to submissions. I heard, <laughs> and um, and I, I and I, I, I'm thing, and I, I, I can see the light, the light of the tunnel, and. Uh, he started getting a little tired, and, and as you had soon your as elbow on his knee, yeah, yeah, that was so that he could technically control. that was the reason, yeah. but but uh, I have maybe a resistant neck or something. Um, so he eventually got tired, let go, and I saw his eyes, and he was just, I got him, I knew at that moment. And then we started in the middle, and I went for a footlock, and he was real calm on the footlock. And that 50 yeah. 50, we didn't call it 50 50, yeah. I said, let's try it, and I did it. And his eyes, you can see, he doesn't know what's Confusion. going on, and he went, I tap, well, more of a macho. I went, I got him. And then, of course, I, I actually couldn't believe it at the moment because Abu Dhabi is, well, it's the equivalent of the Olympics for yeah. our sport. And it's the, there are Olympic wrestlers in Abu Dhabi. There's Sambo guys, there's Olympic judo guys, the best jiu jitsu guys are in this. And it's, the whole world's invited, and the winner gets 40 G's, baby. So <laughs> there's no other tournament that pays How that much. How old were you? I was 27. Dang. <laughs> that was a lot of money, man. Well, yeah, you were like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Jeez, yeah. And uh, it was funny. Uh, so I'm, I'm number 16, but I, I have no co- – Margarita came down. You keep saying you're number 16. You were the number 16 was, seed. Yeah, and, exactly. And, so and that's how you – I ended up being one. But So I'm warming up. I have no coach until Margarita came down for, for the – the last three matches, I'm shadow boxing. I have no, everyone's wrestling with their coach. I'm just like shadow boxing. I look like a weirdo. I, by the way, I, I didn't think I was going to be in the tournament, so I wore my Brazilian tighties because I don't usually fight in the, or compete in those. I usually wear surf trunks, but I'm like, ah, in case I'm invited, I'll I put my, my sweatpants over these. So I'm in my speed, basically speedos, mm-hmm. warming up shadow boxing all by myself. And I look up and there's just only Brazilian girls looking down at me. Like, and I'm like, oh, damn. And one girl goes, Hey, come here! And I'm, I should have done it, but you know, this, this girl could have been on on the cover of a magazine. And I wanted, wanted and she said, "Hey, hi, hey, como você está? How are you doing?" And my Portuguese was not that good back then. I was like, "Oh, eu tô bem. You what? I'm good. How are you?" And she said, in Portuguese, she said, "Oh, you're not Brazilian, are you?" And I said, "No." And she went, oh, and she turned her back and walked. <laughs> she called me over and then <laughs> turned me away, jacked up. So. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, let's just stop, stop, focus, focus. And then uh, <laughs> so I got through this thing. And then at this moment, I don't know why this is, but the champion gets like 95% of the attention. The guy that took second is equal level of me. Maybe he could beat me a different day. I must admit, I'm not going to say I can never lose to that guy. He's really good. But I have a line. 
a thousand people are waiting to meet me and take pictures with me. So I'm in the, I'm still in my Brazilian tidies, you know, and uh, Hot I'm pants, like, I'm yeah. guys like, hey, what's up? Hey, and girls, I'm hey, kids, and, you know, and take a picture. And I, after a half hour, I see this girl, like eight people down going like, hi, remember me? Hi. <laughs> and I, I'm, like, I'm like, I'm like, mental note. Like, so she, she, wait, she waited like an hour to meet me and she finally, with an earshot, she's like in Portuguese, remember me? Hey, I knew you could do it. She's saying this in Portuguese and I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so she gets up to me and I'm sure the average guy would have would have caved into this, but I I skipped her just like that, and uh, she had this little hey, puppy dog look with this hurt eyes on her. Blooded, <laughs> that was like you were the true my champion. moral victory of that day. It was awesome. So the uh, good day. Well, when when you were doing that, I remember, and when you getting ready for that, first of all, we trained freaking hard, like hard. just crazy. And I remember Sarge, since <laughs> to push you hard, as hard as we possibly could, like. Sarge because Sarge's a better Gas wrestler pass. than me. He would do the takedowns with you And then as soon as you guys would hit the mat I would jump on top oh, yeah, of you that's right. get, And that way and get, get you just as tired as we get you but also I Didn't think about it this way But man a lot of times when you and I would be training like we would just sit there and try and footlock each other for a half an hour I mean it would be like it's which is weird because now that's very common to see no in, one was really doing that actually Yeah, no one was doing it back then and now you see tournaments and that's what the tournament is It's just a bunch of people trying to footlock each other. Yeah, and they'll sit there heel hook footlock and when when we were doing it, that's why like when I look back on it, I was like, no one was doing that. You would never see anyone sit there and trade footlocks and heel hooks for 20 minutes. As and it, we're, we're actually rolling, trying to submit each other, yeah. but we're just trading and trading and trading. And that gave you such an advantage yeah. when you know you knew moves, you had techniques that were just no one even understood the position. And now you hear uh, John Donaher talking about it, mm. you know. And, and I heard John Donaher talking about the fact that. You know, he teaches his guys to get people in a position that the other person isn't comfortable with, right? Yeah. And that's a, that's what you were doing mm-hmm. way way back then was, hey, I'm going to take you to somewhere that you do not understand what's happening, and you will be confused, and I'm going to crush you. And, and on top of that, you know, your natural, like I said, a, a mutant skills and all that, and it just turns into, a, well, I guess it turns into world championship is what it turns into. That was a good day. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, the fifth, it became. What I won with the fifty-fifty, I didn't. I didn't have a name for that position. I, I was reading Portuguese from some respectable older guys. I won't say their names, but people I looked up to were saying basically, "This is a disaster." This gringo, gringo means foreigner. It's not a slur. It just means foreign. The damn foreigners coming down here. This is not jujitsu. What the hell? Repeated by different people, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, I looked at my gold medal in my trophy and I'm like I don't feel so bad actually you know? <laughs> but that three months later I hear about a position called the 50-50 I'm like I want to see it and I go oh now it's accepted it's yeah. a Brazilian move now yeah. also the, one, the move I got Solowin no one was doing that knee lock now now it's commonplace uh, Crowbar I forget if it was you or me that came up with the idea but you for sure came up with the name Crowbar I heard in Russia <laughs> Crowbar I'm like, and they're doing Crowbar in the, with a cage I'm like man that spread around so like, and, and uh, man all these kind of things um, you know what maybe someone's done it before me but you brought a legit actual military gas mask on the treadmill you're like, Dean, put this on. I'm like, what the hell? And I just, I just, I look like, like from a damn horror movie. Like, with the, and so now everyone's wearing gas masks, like a damn train mask when they yeah, train. Yeah, but, training but these aren't real gas masks. This is actual. Yeah. And you're, I'm running. So I was like, if you slow down, we're adding another 20 minutes. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I did it. I didn't complain. But yeah, we, we were like doing stuff before most people. It was, it was good times. Yeah, was good that was pretty awesome. And also at this whole time period, you were also fighting MMA. Yeah, and and you were. King of the Cage, uh, you fought a bunch of fights in King of the Cage. You were the middleweight champion in King of the Cage, uh, pretty. And then that's when King of the Cage was, was sort of the feeder organization for Pride, which was yeah. when Pride was the equivalent. It was of one, the UFC uh, in Until UFC everywhere bottom. in the world. Yeah, you know, it was it was very very popular. The fights were awesome. They had the best fighters. Um, well, I can't say they had the best fighters because they had they had equivalent no, they, fighters of. I, uh, I think they were one notch at that time. 
I think they were one notch above you. Some of them, but some of them came to the UFC and didn't do as well as well. Yeah, but Shogun. some guys went to Pride. Yeah, and didn't just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, some, yeah some, they, they it, work both ways. It, different it, rules. I'll yeah. say it's equivalent. I won't say it's better. There we it go, was sure. definitely. It was definitely. So you were in the feeder organization for Pride, and then you, and then you went to Pride. But King of the Cage was third. It was considered the third hardest in the world. Yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah. Well, I don't even think. Yeah, underneath that was just yeah. completely yeah. unknown things. Yeah. And you and I got lucky because. Uh, well, I got lucky because I was hanging out with you, and we would go to Japan, and we saw some pretty, pretty crazy fights in Japan too. We, my goodness, the stories we have. Remember that? Remember that time? Uh, we were at this pool hall, like it's late night, it's like one thirty. I don't know, whatever it was midnight maybe. We're playing pool, and there's this uh, VIP area. It's a, it's actual a, a pool lounge. And there's uh, this, this big Japanese bodyguard there, and what's behind? You can hear music and stuff. And they just try to get in. He's like, he's like, like, I guess that means no, you can't come in. And uh, we're just there. And Hoist, that's when <laughs> that's when he had he lost to Yoshida. Yeah, yeah. He's come by with a bunch of, um, let's say, connected Japanese uh, friends, and he sees us. He goes, "Hey, Dean Chago," and gets us in there. And it's it's like a karaoke lounge, and it was Lionel Richie's uh, uh, voice coach. Was singing there? <laughs> Do you I don't really? remember that. Yeah, part. it was it was just nuts. Was like, it, and and um, dude, I met Lionel Richie's voice coach. What's up? <laughs> Hell yeah! That's well, at how that time, I roll. Was, yeah. That we saw. So seeing those big fights in Japan when we saw Nogira fight Bob Sapp. So Nogira nah. was Nogira's a hundred or sorry two hundred and thirty pounds, and maybe two hundred three hundred fifty. Yeah, Bob Sapp's three hundred fifty pounds. He beat the living crap out of. Nogira for however long. Seven minutes, yeah. And then Nogira got him in an arm lock. Umu Plata, sweep, arm lock. That was Open crazy. The arms. It was in the national stadium. There's like 120,000 yep. people in the crowd. They had kettle drums. Do you even know what those are, Echo? Do you know what a kettle <laughs> drum is? <laughs> Just big giant drums, and there was a troop of Japanese <laughs> drum players. So when this thing kicked off, these guys are surrounding the top of the stadium with kettle drums. Dun, 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 dun. It was on fire and Dean and I were there you know and we flew actually flew over with with, with hoist for those things and Bergen was there I think yeah, yeah that's right man and, it was just I think Bergen was in, in the walkout entourage or something <laughs> you know he was somewhere else but just, guys were, were, were parachuting in like remember that uh, oh yeah uh, it was uh, Inoki uh, Inoki is yeah. like he's like he has a camera he's like I'm, I'm at 20,000 feet and he's like I'm falling and, he, and it's like and they come down and they land like in the ring. It was pretty crazy. It was good crazy. Yeah. And then you ended up, you know, obviously since you were the king of the cage champion, you ended up going to Pride. You had some yeah. sick fights in Pride. You fought, uh, well, you beat Soji. Yeah. And he was a he was like a warrior. Yeah. And then you guy. had a beast of a fight against Arona. Who, I also faced the, this, uh, oh, and then I, I, well, I didn't get to fight Paulo Filo because he got his, um, he got his leg broken. Um, but I also fought, um, um, Amasula from Russia. Oh, sounds yeah. like some of these things sound like I'm making them up, but he legitimately became a hitman for the Russian something, <laughs> the syndicate in Russia. He killed a couple politicians and um, they arrested him because apparently you can't do that. And mm -hmm. is he, that confirmed? He died in prison of cancer. And in Russia, if you kill a few politicians, they just go, "We're not going to take care of your cancer too much." He just ro let him rot away. He died like, died like two years ago. So Dang. he's in prison. That guy, you've seen him before. Just hit. His nose was just yeah, yeah. probably broken. That guy became a hitman. And uh, so I fought that guy. And uh, Arona was, that was a hard match. That wasn't, I'll take ownership of the situation. I'm not, I'm not making excuses, but explanation wise, it was not, I was not my normal self for that fight. But it was a hard fight. I lost by decision. It was good. It was good. It was, uh, 100,000 people in the crowd. It was yeah, awesome. That was you walked crazy. out <laughs> in San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> My friend Tim, uh, Tim Comas. Tim Ford. Timmy. The oh, guy no, in the mall. Yeah, yeah, Com yeah. Tim Comas now, isn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Back then it was different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he, uh, he made, I walked into one of the songs. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah, San Diego. <laughs> and Hans was there. It was good. It was good times. Yeah. <laughs> Brent school. was there. Yeah. And then, and then eventually you get picked up by UFC. Yeah. So I transferred at the right time. Yeah, two thousand five six. I just transferred. It was and a perfect time to transfer. Actually, I had some good scraps. I was actually in in overseas now because yeah. I was back at the team for a while. So I was kind of out of the uh, out of the fight game for a little bit. I was still training. Yeah, I yeah, trained when, when I was with you. But um, you had a bunch of fights in UFC. By the way, make sure 
that I, I don't forget to tell the kill Jocko story. I got to tell that story later. But we'll just tell it right now. <laughs> well, I'll see. But but um, okay. So I was not. Maybe I was in pride at the time. Jocko went to I don't know, Afghan. You were somewhere. I think it was. Like, I think it was my first deployment to Iraq for a couple months. And uh, well, then it was maybe I was just doing no, no work. M- maybe if you, I'm not sure. But you were gone, and um, you come back, and my mom had this uh, medication. I, I had acne, and I don't take this. It was some kind of antibiotic. It helped it, but it, I didn't know it made me really weak and uh, took my endurance away. This is actually true. This is not an excuse. This, no, this is an it. excuse. That's fine. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, so Jocko comes back, and I'm, I'm not really feeling like it. Jocko's like, let's train. I'm like, okay. And Jocko <laughs> like, kicks my ass. And Jocko's like, literally, he's angry. He's like, you lazy mother. I, I'm in the desert. I'm doing this. And you, you're sitting on your ass here in San Diego doing nothing. And I kick your ass. And what? And I'm like, eh. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like ashamed of myself. Cause, cause, and then you go away for like a month somewhere. You're gone. And I'm like, and I, but that medication was at 10 days and I stopped taking it. I feel strong again. I'm like, oh, I understand now. So I'm training. I'm like, mother, when the guy comes back, I can't wait for this. I made a CD. And it's Kill Jocko. And it was, <laughs> had like corn and metallic. And, all these like, and so Jocko came in. I'm like, hey, Jocko. And I put the CD in and we trained. And that was my day, I guess. <laughs> I think I was like talking shit to you. Like, you. <laughs> Yeah, Dean is a My good, feelings were hurt. Good at talking about. And here's what sucks for me is so if if both of us are on point, I'm get I'm catching a beat down. If so if both of us are bringing our A game, I'm yeah. catching a beat down. If Dean's bringing his A game and I'm bringing my weak game, I'm catching a beat down. If I'm bringing my full A game and Dean's having a horrible day, I could do like barely okay yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's you, like you, you have your days brother you have your yeah, days you know? the, so. the day the really good days that i have are are very few i have to i have to earn them i'll put it through that way i have to mm-hmm. earn them and um then so so you do ufc you do decent ufc you had some tough yeah. fights i was, you had some I was good top fights. three four ranked in my division uh, my my only two losses by decision was nate marquardt and yushin okami and they both after that fight fight and it's the silver so i was Two times right there front for the belt. Yeah. I was top five, top four. No, I don't care. Top six. But I fought to fight in Silva, and I lost both those matches. But the, the other four, I won. And uh, my first fight was Elisa Sakara, who's from Italy. He's a really tough fighter. Fat, he, probably the fastest hands. And actually, I figured this out later. I was the underdog, but they were actually trying to feed me to him. He was going to fight Chuck Liddell after oh, you he beat were me. a stepping stone? Well, supposedly. Yeah, supposed to be. And uh, they, screwed up the they were already planning like he's going to fight Chuck Liddell because he has probably fa- he has faster hands. He, probably Chuck has a, a really good chin, better wrestling, but Sakara has faster hands, better boxing. So they're going to oh, have them fight after. That's what I heard. But um, that day, I, I got in the same triangle. I got uh, Shoji Akira in, and, uh, but he tapped. Uh, Shoji Akira went to sleep. Mm-hmm. So both my debuts were won by the same move and uh, against tough guys. So then I fought... Uh, Another Japanese opponent. I fought a Bulgarian Olympic wrestler. I fought Nate Marquardt, Yushin Okami, and I fought Jeremy Horn. So six fights in USC. So you know, my career has been focused on jujitsu. More no gi is because when you do MMA, you don't you don't have a gi or a kimono mm-hmm. on. So you're kind of wasting your time if you're training in, in that aspect and you don't have a gi on. You're kind of, how to grab the belt, how to do this. You're kind of wasting your time. So yeah, I've uh, distributed my time between mixed martial arts and grappling. Jiu-jitsu. And and you weren't done either because you went back in 2011. Yeah, you went back, and well, 2009 was that 2009. 2009 was in Spain? we were in Barcelona, Spain, Barcelona, yeah. Barcelona. and um, yeah, I was just well coming out bicep surgery. It wasn't my, yeah. it wasn't my year. Yeah, yeah, and, and those uh, were some close matches. I mean, I was thinking about it. You, double overtime to yeah. Vinny Magales. Yeah, and we next year we both won our divisions. Yeah, gold medal. So it was the first match in the absolute, and he yeah. won. It was double. Overtime zero zero, and well, yeah, the judges. We were looking at each other like, ah, and they raised his hands. Wait, so. who did he have an umaplot on you, or did you yeah, have an umaplot? I think on that's him? why he won because I had, I had him in two foot locks. Oh, that's right, you had him in two foot locks. He had yeah, but he one umaplot. But the umaplot's more jujitsu ish. Mm, I think yeah. that's why. Uh, yeah, and then um, yeah, 2011. I I don't know why. It probably was a harder tournament, but I'm not saying it wasn't easy. The it golden simp- the golden simple. aura came back. Yep. I don't know why. Yep. I don't. I have no idea why. But I, yeah, I just showed up and first match. I, it was hard match actually. It was my friend Augusto Ferrari from Sao Paulo, Brazil, mm-hmm. very right. tough guy. Um, I thought that I'm top three or four seated, right? 
I was wrong. He was. He was like three, and I was number fourteen. Because now I'm a thirty. I'm thirty five, and he's like twenty five. So like, oh, this, get this old guy out get of here. Get the old probably. guy. Yeah. Knock him out of this thing. <laughs> I won. I'm like that was the one of the lowest rent guys. That was a hard match. By points. The second guy was the <laughs> European champion. I footlocked him like two minutes, and then we have one day to rest, and I'm facing uh, Rodolfo Vieira, who's and um, total beast. No one could beat this guy, and uh, he's like 21, and I'm 35, <laughs> and this it was it was it was in Not- Nottingham, England. I can't I can't do that accent, damn it. But Nottingham, England, we were there, and uh, at the hotel, I popped my rib. I, I didn't want anyone to know my ribs popped like it, it, during the it, match. Yeah, uh, uh, during the match with the Polish guy, Aradek Turek, European champion. He, go, he tried to fuck me, and I turned out of it. I popped my rib, and I got his heel. And I'm like, my rib is is unsat. It's it's, it's not it's, it's not up to, it's not up to standards, you know. So I'm like, <laughs> it, it hurts right now, and I'm warm. I'm like, so I sat down. I waited for everyone to leave the arena, so they wouldn't see me like limping home mm-hmm. to the hotel. So I didn't want to see, you know, appear strong when you're weak. Mm-hmm. Appear weak when you're strong. So I was. Let's say week at that moment. I don't want people to see that. So I got kind of walked real slow back to the hotel, and this guy's downstairs. Hey, hey, Dean, you're you're, you're facing Rodolfo Vieira tomorrow. I'm like, yeah. Do you know how good that guy is? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I heard. No, do you actually understand what you're getting yourself into? I'm like, okay, just stop it, man. Just get the fuck, get away from me. You know? And uh, I'm like trying to get in my head. Kind of motivated me actually. I like I like the feeling like oh they think like I'm gonna I lose. said you like to be an underdog man. The next day I showed up oh and I saw Rudolph Vieira he was competing with with spandex on I'm like oh yeah because <laughs> it's harder to slip out of leg locks. Mm-hmm. Next day no shirt and no spandex <laughs> so yeah. someone told him something <laughs> so I faced him and yeah he's you know he's like the future of the sport awesome uh, great sport as well but I got him in about, I think uh, four minutes I got his heel in the four eleven. Mm. which no one was doing at yeah. that moment. So my 50-50 and 411 was two of my nine lives of innovation. That after I, I did that, people I started doing it. Yeah, yeah, of course. But when I did it, no one understood what was going on. Just so confusion. it was like a, it was like a secret weapon. Just total secret confusion. Weapon. Yeah. And then Joan Cisse also, he beat Jeanji. I uh, took him down and mounted him. So beat someone like Jeanji. Joan Cisse is also super high level. And, uh, but he, See mental mental games. Um, I'm older. I'm ten years older than Joao, so I went. Uh, uh, now at the time I speak good Portuguese, so um, and in his corner was Leo Zinho Vieira, <laughs> and Leo knows my he knows I'm a footlock guy. So, so I'm like, uh, and I heard that Joao has good footlocks and whatever. So I'm I'm kind of talking like to him. I'm like, hey, but I put my pé, I'm saying my foot's right here. Come on, and I'm uh, wiggling my feet like in his armpit, like go for it, and he's like. He goes, I don't think so, man. And then Lee was like, No, no, and like yelling. <laughs> but, admit, but I could see before the match, like he, he's not, he's not cocky, but I could see he has a little pride. I could just tell mm-hmm. him he's younger than me, so I'm like, I'm play that that game. I'm like, let him play on my game, you know. He has good full locks, but that's my yeah, forte, yeah. forte, let's yeah, yeah. say. So eventually, I'm like, Hey, man, it's right here. I heard you have good full locks. I, I, I was too much. He, he went for my foot, and then <laughs> <laughs> so you I goaded him. him into doing yeah. that. It was psych- psyops, Dang. right? <laughs> <laughs> See, the thing is, like, right when you get older, you got to use those little tricks, yeah. you know. Sometimes, yeah. wait, so, so you good. did that thing where when they go for your foot, yeah. that well, opens it, up it, your it's, it's like your punch me, lock. come punch me, I'll punch you back, but right, you get the first right. punch, yes. But I have to be confident I can take a punch, right? Yeah. Well, I'm somewhat confident that I can resist a leg lock or counter in time, and, and it all worked. You know, it's funny because I'm sitting here laughing at laughing at that, but you do that to me, yeah, me yeah. too. And after yeah, but like, you know, you don't you don't fall for it though, yeah. Right? But yeah, then yeah. like I will, I'll, yeah, eventually. <laughs> like I'll, I'll be like, I'll, I can get this, and I'll <laughs> yeah. just go for it, and then you'll you'll get you'll fall on me from yeah, exactly. I get greed. That's Jocko's sin. Greed. Went back again in uh, 2013. For ADCC team, again, yeah, took silver to Juan. He, he yeah. won that year. Yeah. He won that yeah. year. How did he win? I went for, and I talked to the referees afterwards. It wasn't their fault. I went for a leg lock, and he used that exact moment to sweep me. I did it wrong though. I got greedy that time. He had the arm position. I went for the wrong move. Technically, if the referees knew I was going for a leg lock, it's not a sweep. But now he's up. I'm oh. down by points by one point. I have him in a triangle, and he's, he's really strong. He's flexing his lat. I'm like. I have 30 seconds. I'm not, I haven't been locked in triangle, but his arm's on the opposite side. I'm like, you know what? He's going to muscle this out, win by one point. So I open up my full guard from the bottom, turn on my stomach, he got my back. So he actually won uh, four, four, uh, four. So you were wait, trying to five create to something? Yeah, because otherwise I can mentally be like, you know what? A little thought races through your mind. You know, I, I, can, I know I'm going to lose, but I can always say I would have submitted him. Like, you know, but I'm going to lose. 
Mm-hmm. It's the only chance I have, really, unless I have another two minutes, then it's different. I, so I had to take a chance. It's a one in ten chance, and mm-hmm. it didn't pay off. You know, I took silver. I was really upset about taking silver, but in the end, Abu Dhabi silver's not too bad, right? No, <laughs> no, You're second best in the entire <laughs> so world. Three, I'd say that's three time gold, one time silver. So and then you did the absolute that year too. Uh, did right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So and <laughs> that's one of my favorite matches that you've ever done is against Buchecha, even Buchecha. though you lost. Buchecha, but, it was tied up zero zero for nine minutes, and he. He's like 22. I'm 35, and no, I'm 37 now. And uh, man, it was, oh, it was just weird because everyone's intimidated. Oh, he's, a, he's a very humble, Dude, great he's guy. A beast, yeah. But but people are, he's really strong and athletic and very technical. So I was like, okay, be careful of this. I'm like, be careful. I'm I'm gonna give I'm gonna give him my leg. You know, I just walk out hopping after him my leg, and he's like, what the hell? <laughs> and he grabbed my leg, took me. Now there's no points. He had me in two submissions. I had him three submissions. It was awesome. At the end, I took him down got mounted but my foot was stuck so it didn't count any upa which means shoulder roll in portuguese over that's two points now but wait upa means it actually well, it actually means shoulder roll I, or is that just i thought it was the, just a noise that thought well, maybe that, everyone that's, oh, that's opa oh okay upa is, is shoulder roll but and, uh, if you talk to someone who doesn't do jiu-jitsu upa doesn't mean shoulder roll it means it's a jiu-jitsu term okay uh, uh, so upa means shoulder roll yeah oh, escape the mount so he did that and he's the one damn Brazilian who has a wrestler bridge. Like, he bridged up on it. They took me over, and I'm like, God damn it. And I know that move from, like, when I was 14 years old. But he took me over, and I was in my full guard. He's up 2-0, and he won like that. So it was a good match. That's a good match. match. Yeah. That's on YouTube. Go watch that match. If you want to just see. We were exhausted. Yeah, that that is that is just a beast of a match. It's I, a beast of a match. I could not. I'm not saying. Could, yeah, I couldn't move my shoulders afterwards. And I'm like. This is gonna suck. <laughs> you know, yeah, you. Yeah. It's weird because you had injuries along the way. Yeah, obviously, but like you had how many knee surgeries have you had? Two, and and but those were when you were pretty young, right? Yeah, but as I got older, it's like my shoulder, my bicep. I, you were there in the gym when my bicep snapped. Yeah, that was terrible. That Sparring. Was, yeah, I was a lot there of people were like, they were like, "Oh, this is mm-hmm. done. This is done." Yeah, undisputed. Yeah, I was the guy was blocking with his elbow. He's trying to knock me out. So I was like, oh, I'll knock you out. And then I was throwing too hard. I wasn't really warm yet. And I hit his elbow with my bicep and it snapped. Yeah. Terrible. I'm like, I didn't know you could snap your bicep, but you can. Yes, you can. Confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> Double confirmed. <laughs> Double confirmed. Yeah. What do you do when you, when, like, when you got an injury, what's what's your philosophy around trying to get it to heal? Because people get injured during jiu-jitsu, you know? Yeah. It's, it's difficult for me because but I can try to make it as simple as possible. See, jiu-jitsu, boxing, any kind of a confrontational thing, which you are an expert in, in the military, but also in jiu-jitsu, I mean, even if it's not uh, fun because you're getting smashed, you're not bored. You're not bored. So so if you can't train jiu-jitsu, me, now I know we're different. I personally don't like looking at myself in the mirror. I don't like that at all, but... And with weights, I, I get bored personally. Mm-hmm. I want to have someone trying to hurt me. Well, I, hurt, I don't want to get yeah. hurt, but that at least I, I can be mentally immersed in, in the issue. Um, so th- that makes it hard for me. So personally, I I focus on other things like learning languages or traveling or doing seminars, things like that. How many languages do you speak? Well, everyone's oh, team speaks seven languages. No, I, I speak three in the way that I can make jokes, I can argue, and I can spell... Well, I can write and I can read uh, Portuguese, Spanish, and English. French, I can uh, I can have a conversation, but I'm not smooth. I have a big accent. I couldn't make jokes and I, I couldn't effectively argue unless I want to sound like Borat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I could I could do that. Maybe I I would sound like a Croatian was uh, Mirko Krokop's coach uh, for like seven years. Uh, like survival, like I want to go there. How are you? Like you know yeah. so. Uh, three or four or five it depends on your definition even German I can kind of get around a little bit but it's just on the street asking for directions and stuff like that but it's not good so three I guess three I'll say three three solid let's talk some jiu-jitsu philosophies jiu-jitsu gi or no gi that's like saying um, what do you like doing better uh, long distance running versus sprinting or uh, judo versus wrestling uh, kickboxing or boxing there's different sports they're related they're similar there's a, me- a lot of mechanical uh, similarities. So Oki is better for, uh, it does help you to get a tighter style, but if you're wasting, not wasting, listen, yeah, yeah. If you're gonna be doing no gi, and I know, I know some f- 
I don't know if anyone watching knows, knows the significance of this. A wrestler knows right away this is wrong. This is a, this is the a gable grip. Mm-hmm. This is the S grip. They're fine. This is the BS grip. It doesn't <laughs> work. A lot of world champions that only train, they're all over uh, sleeve and belt. They grab like this mm-hmm. because they're taught to rely upon the uniform. So if you rely upon the uniform and you don't have the uniform, now 80% of your tools are gone. So I think it's good to do both. It's normal to, to prefer one over the other, but don't discount. Uh, no gi is more technical and faster in the transitions. Absolutely. And the fact that you you can slip out of something easier means I had to uh, transition to the next move faster. But gi has more options. I, I have many chokes I can do. I can grab my own belt, wrap it around your wrist. You can't do that without gi. Uh, so that's only... so. Some it's, people say some people say gi is more technical, but I don't yeah. believe that it's more technical. Different. There might be, I guess, no, I was going to say maybe there's more techniques, but there's not. There's it's equal. I just think they're equal. Yeah. And they're equal and technical because to hold someone down with the gi is a lot easier. You get yeah. someone across yeah. side with the gi, like you're going to hold them down. You get across side with someone with no gi, it's a lot harder to hold them down because there's nothing to hold on to. Yeah. And so so it makes it harder. That's why I think no gi makes your offense better. Gi makes your defense yeah, better that makes because it's harder to slip yeah. out of things. Yeah, if you're in a submission with gi, uh, it's hard to slip out of the, you know, you can be, get lucky. It's really hard. You're not really going to slip out of things. Also, if you train with wrestling shoes, it's different. If you, hey, with the fatigues, it's different. Yeah. Training with the Marines, uh, with the team guys, or I train the police, whatever, down in Brazil as well. I mean, they train like how they are on duty, you know? Yeah. So having someone with a, you know, fatigues on, they still call them fatigues? Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I, I usually just call what them camis. Camis. That's that's cute. <laughs> Sorry, dude. That's what I called them. I'm not trying to <laughs> get your camis on. Yeah, BDUs. I never. There we go. Yeah, ACUs, <laughs> BDUs. Every, I, I don't know. We all. I, everyone I know, we just call them camis. Fatigues. Maybe it's cute to you. Pull guard. <laughs> Should a human being pull guard in a fight? No. Oh, unless it's a controlled like USC, I pull guard in one, but that's because there's one person right there, and their forte is striking, and. Mm, to the end of my towards the end of my career, people wouldn't fall for that. They just get get the hell away from me. But I, I've won a few fights where, even one, the guy was across side on top, and he could have just got away from me. But he, he proceeded to attack me, and then I reversed and and triangle arm locked. It was uh, James Lee is my friend now, uh, very tough guy. But he, you know he engaged my strength. Uh, so you could same thing like Crow Cop, probably the most notorious. A high kick in the history of uh, MMA. You know, he broke a lot of grounds with that. Average guy, you wouldn't say, just throw a left high kick to the head. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not going to work that well. But it works if you do it really well. I wouldn't say it's a good strategy in, in a fight, but it's good to do because you get to a situation where you're familiar, you have hold, you have your legs and your arms engaging the opponent, and you can work from there. But you have to have a good guard. You can't just, oh, I'm going to sit on the bottom and be good. Oh, I'm going to cross my feet and I'm fine. No. You get beat up in a fight. Yeah. So if you if you're good there, you can do it. It's not a general th- thing I would recommend though. Yeah. You know, it's I was just remembering that when you fought Nate Marquardt in the UFC, that was what bummed me out about yeah. that. Is I, I, I can hear Jackson going, yep. "Do not throw a punch." Yep. <laughs> so yep. I pull is, guard, and he's just like, um, "So stick to the game plan." I'm so like, Greg Jackson, it. who is a really smart strategist really smart and i'm kind of like you know your strategist so it was like my strategy i'm supposed to be cornering you and telling you what to do strategy wise and greg jackson is on the other side telling nate what to do strategy wise and after the fight i was even during the well that's what pissed me off was that during the fight i didn't recognize quickly enough what was happening and what was happening was nate marcourt was just not moving so all he was doing was waiting for the referee stand up yeah, and it came. Expose yeah. nothing because, you know, Nate was better on the feet. He's also a black belt in jiu-jitsu. He's, yeah, good. he's, he's, he's yeah, awesome at yeah, jiu-jitsu, but he didn't want to play around. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. No, why take the chance, right? The chance is there's a there's a, yeah. a much higher percentage of him getting submitted than it is of him getting knocked out by you. Yeah. So he would just literally hold Dean and wait. Mm. And I got strategically beat by Greg Jackson. Now, I love Greg Jackson. I think he's an awesome guy. And yeah, I've hung out with him. Guy. He's a super guy. And... Like it bummed me out that he tactically, well, he strategically beat me um, with that.
plan, which was, hey, we're just going to hold and we're going to wait for the referee stand up. And it was something that we didn't train for. Yeah, we didn't train for it until later. Then we started training for like, okay, the the other thing we had to start training for is someone that runs away from you, right? Because yeah. a lot of guys, they would they would just try and get away from you. That's all they wanted. Yeah, and and so that's that's very difficult to contend with. I wish that we could like have a fight like in an elevator or something. Yeah, yeah. In, a, in, a, in an <laughs> old the elevator fighting championships, <laughs> dealers are champion because you can't get away from yeah. me. Yeah, or like in a movie theater, like I'm sitting next to you, ready go. <laughs> that's a, that's a problem. You know, it's, I like that range. It's, it's my style. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, no, it's you, high roll. you were meant for that. <laughs> you were meant for that. Do you? What do you think about when you see? All the foot locks, that's become such a huge focus of the game um, right now. I'm kind of like, I told you so. <laughs> because I, I, you know, you were in the middle of this. Oh, yeah, for sure. I had about 10 years of, yeah, you're doing good with that somehow, but we don't, you know, that's wrong. Yeah. And oh, by the way, Jerry Costa, who's yeah. Kid Peligro. Yeah. He actually told me when I was blue, he goes, you know, Dean, this foot locks, it's kind of like tacky. <laughs> basically <laughs> and when I won he was there in Brazil when I won he walked he went in English he's Brazilian but he, he was Lister thank God you didn't listen to me on my bullshit <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome he's a great guy he is but, he's awesome but he uh, at the time it was just uh, that was the way and yeah I do use some cliches but some cliches make sense uh, when you know the rules now you can break the rules yeah. if you don't know the rules mm, so yeah. I knew the rules, and you can get away with doing that because no one else is doing that. And sometimes I break rules because I, I don't want to react in a way my opponent will predict so easily. So I'll do something wrong because it's unexpected. I'll do something that, well, those who don't do, do jiu-jitsu may not understand this, but I'm in your guard. I'll reach my arm down inside, like I'm a white belt, mm. knowing you'll go for a triangle. Yeah. And as you do, I'm around your guard. Yeah, no, no, I know you. I wouldn't teach that to white belt. They'll get caught in triangle. See, yeah. so I do things like that just because it's weird, and maybe I'm weird too. But yeah, so that's my style. <laughs> a little bit, but yeah, leg locks. Yeah. What do you think about uh, some people talk about the self defense techniques of jujitsu, and or the lack of self defense mm. techniques for jujitsu? Oh. Now, yeah. what I yeah. will say is this: mm -hmm. I've been in some self-defense classes that you're yeah. teaching and you don't focus it on a lot but occasionally you'll do a self and, yeah. I, and I act almost every time you teach one of those self-defense classes I pick something up I learn yeah. something okay well I, I it is true when we were young starting it was from born from the UFC let's say motive it was like oh Hoist Gracie that was the main thing Hicks and Gracie you know Valley Tudo and back then at least your coach could fight or has been in fights and I'm not criticizing anyone but it's a martial art martial being what war confrontation I'm not saying you want to be in com be confrontational or be in fights but if you can't use jiu-jitsu to defend yourself when it counts most and I don't know if eh, it's, it's not really a martial art anymore so yeah um, on the other hand if you think that I've had people tell me this Oh yeah, I didn't. I, I saw you. You're a good fight in UFC, uh, but you know, if you tried at me, I would poke your eyes. Mm -hmm. And I go, okay, mm -hmm. thanks for letting me know, warning me, because that's kind of scary. I could poke their eyes too. I don't tell them because yeah. childish argument. Mm -hmm. See, if if you do one class one time, you know that's why you have to roll and do it. You know, for boxing, you need someone actually throwing punches at you and learn how to stop those and move away from the punches. Just hitting a bag or brick not hit back. You know, so. <laughs> Let's if if anyone here listening is under 25, no one's going to understand what that means. But So having this, putting yourself in hard situations, jiu-jitsu is all about problem solving. You know, you get to a situation and you learn how to solve the problem, you get relaxed, and you d learn to deal with this. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important to know how to relax, how to conserve your energy, as you said, knowing when to attack. There's psyops, there's, there's mental tactics. There's, uh, You know, you can tell a lot about a person uh, how they fight. You can see if they're dirty, if they take shortcuts, if they have a temper. You can see if they're patient. You can see if they're explosive. You can see if they're lackadaisical. Uh, lackadaisical. You can see a lot of things about somebody if they're greedy. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm laughing. He, Dean, he's gonna. <laughs> Dean uh, accuses me of being greedy, greed. and he's right. I will get greedy with a move, and I'll hang on to something that I shouldn't hang on to, mm -hmm. and I'll end up in a position that I shouldn't be in, and then Dean will immediately start going greed, <laughs> greed. <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> Well, you know, you can tell a lot about a person by how they fight and also how they handle a defeat and how they handle a victory. Um, that's why 
I don't do it as an outward display, but every time I win against someone, I, I never run around yelling. I, I, I check on them. And if I was to lose, I shake my opponent's hand. Uh, I'm not, there's nothing, I'm not saying anything admirable about that, but, but that's something I always strive to be is someone that's respectful. And you can see, as you said, humility is taught. And if people don't like to be humbled, they're probably not going to last very long doing a martial art, especially jiu-jitsu, because it's such a close and personal, like, you got owned. Like, that, there's arm, no escape that arm belongs to Jocko There's now. no debate. Yeah. There's no debate. You just got tapped out. You can't lie in a fight. You, you just got tapped out. Now, with some other martial arts, it's like, well, you know, if this was a real fight, I would have done this yeah. or that, or if I would have punched him harder, I would have done something else, I would have done something different. It's like... Jiu-jitsu, you just got you got put in a position where this dude could have ripped your shoulder apart yeah. or put you to sleep and killed you. So so there's there's truth in jujitsu and that's why it's so humbling. That's what I said you could tell a lot by how someone is uh, okay, if we have a sport like okay, golf or sprinting, okay, these these are all sports and they're good, but I don't know. You can't, how someone uh, swings a golf club, I can't tell too much about their personality, but if someone takes a punch and they look right back at you and they punch you back, yeah, that person's a, there's something about that guy that's different than the average guy who turns away and runs away, okay? Um, if someone tries to arm lock me and I relax and I escape, uh, I time it correctly, okay, there's timing, there's technique, of course, it makes some kind of sense. Um, I don't know, uh, back to the salt offense aspect. Yeah, I think I think you should be prepared for a worst case scenario. And actually, for some weird reason, now that I can fight, I don't. No one even messes with me. I, I don't. I don't. Go, I'm not going around trying to pick pick fights with anyone. But for some reason, like no one even tries to fight me right now. I wonder why. I'm not. I'm, <laughs> but you know, I, I've noticed you look this. Like a mutant, bro. <laughs> nah, <laughs> you know. You know, in Japan, Russia, Brazil, whatever, Croatia. In any country you can imagine I've been to, for some reason, and I'm I'm by far like not a um, a criminal or something like that. But for some reason, you get you get a lot of these gangster mafia type guys that are fans, and you end up hanging out with these guys. And it happened in Russia. I'm not glorifying anything, but these guys you wouldn't even know they're gangsters. These guys are powerful. These are powerful guys you don't want to anger. And also, Jocko himself, Navy. Hey, Jocko, what do you do? I'm an investor. Um, Jocko, were you in the Navy? Yes, I was in the Navy. Jocko, what did you do in the Navy? Well, I, okay, I was a SEAL. You know, <laughs> whereas maybe a 19 year old kid who wants to be a SEAL will be like, I'm going to be, a, you know, he's going to say it. And a young fighter or uh, uh, someone who wants to be a fighter is going to be like, yeah, US, I'm a USC fighter. You get a really established fighter who's not, not going to usually say, I'm a fighter. I, I break people's arms and no, it's not usually that way. Also, some of the richest people I know, you wouldn't know they're rich because. But I, I've met girls, I've dated girls who, they, they have one nice dress. They're poor as hell. But they look they look like they're rich when they're going out. <laughs> they're trying really hard to look rich, right? So it's interesting how how when when you understand things more, it's like, I don't think you have to, and this sounds corny, prove it. I think you just, you just you, you have a higher understanding about that, the, the confrontational uh, of, of human beings. I've talked about how when you roll with someone you've never rolled with before, you meet someone. Yeah. And as soon as you make contact with them, as soon as you clinch up with them, you can tell, you can tell what's up. Yeah. You can you can kind of tell, like, okay, this is going to be this guy knows what he's doing. This this person doesn't really know, or they're okay. Or wait a second, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm going to find out pretty quickly. Remember Sasha? Yeah, dude, his aura was strong. <laughs> yeah. Dude, his Sasha, aura was way strong. Sasha, is he looked like Shrek. For funny, real. But, yeah, no, he's, he's a, a Croatian beast, Shrek. bro. If if you got Shrek and like took away his green skin, but like. A pale polar bear white skin on yeah. it. Yeah, it looks like a Shrek. And he actually, he wouldn't mind me saying this because no one really knows his full name. I'm, he was Quo Hop's main training partner, and uh, he he didn't speak English. He speaks Spanish. He served uh, some prison time in Spain <laughs> for uh, a felony, let's say. Okay. <laughs> and so we were talking in Spanish the whole time, and he came to San Diego. Visit, that's how you met him. Yeah. And that guy. You know, the first time I had trained with him at Krokop's gym, Krokop has a gym under his house. It's a full gym with a cage. What do you think Sasha like weighs? Uh, 230, probably. Dude, he's got to weigh more than that. His head five and foot neck are nine. the size of this he's table. Five, five foot, but he's five foot nine, ten, you know? And he has really good hands. That guy's hardcore. He was What's the, up with his head and his neck, dude? <laughs> he, come he's, on. He's just, he's just like, yeah. He's I know, a I mutant. Know. He's a great guy. Uh, 
I don't think he and Krokop are in touch anymore. And I'm not really, for some reason, me and Krokop don't, don't talk so much anymore. But uh, he was the resident grappling guy slash coach training partner. So I arrive and I'm like, I'm kind of like the new guy. Like, and this dude, he looks at me and there was that little bit of like, okay, this is the new guy. Yeah. And we train and he got me in, in well, an arm lock behind the head. And I'm oh. like, I'm not tapping this. And I got out and I got him. And I'm like, I should have tapped that. <laughs> because it was the first time, you know, I'm not going to, I don't want to. Yeah. And he was probably doing the same thing. We ended up being real good friends. He's a better wrestler than me and a better boxer than me. And he has good submissions, but my and thing his is, head, man, you, yeah, it, you, know, you, you hit it. I part of me. You hit his head; it can actually hurt your hand. I mean, it can <laughs> actually. And he'll just take. He won't even blink his eye. He's mm-hmm. a really confident guy. He's solid. But yeah, so you get some freaks like that, like a bowling ball of fury. Yeah. What should beginners focus on in jujitsu? Finding a, a good coach is imperative. Because you need some kind of direction. And in the end, or hopefully sooner than later, you start developing your own way. Even if it's a little a little variation of what your coach is saying. Uh, maybe it doesn't have to be some champion. Someone you connect with and you can hear. Not listen. You can hear what they're saying. Because someone, I might I might say something, and Andre Germain would say the same thing in a slight variation. It will make sense. Maybe he says over me and vice versa. I've had people both ways tell me, you know, something that, that you will say made more sense or something that someone else said the same exact thing but mm-hmm. said in a different way. So finding a coach is really important. Uh, also, well, humility will be taught by itself. Yep. Um, so that goes without saying. I always tell people relax. There we go. Yeah, of course. Relax, of course. But that's difficult for a beginner oh, because yes, it is. you don't, you don't want to relax. You want to win. That's why I try and make it so evident that that's the most important thing you should do you know a lot of people also ask me like what schools you know i I live in cleveland i live in toledo what school should i go to and i think one thing that people should realize these days the days of like hey there's some shyster that's running around saying he's a black belt there's not a lot of those guys left anymore because the internet has just overtaken them and they just get called out so so I, i think if you go to a place that has a website that lists the instructors names the instructors maybe show some of their competitive history they show their lineage of where they got their black belt from it's all good. Like you can't put that stuff on the internet you can't say I got my my black belt from Hoyler Gracie and, and not if you didn't and expect to have like expect to get away with that. So do, do you know who Rafael Torre was? He was the key in the yeah, kid. Yeah. So that's so back Joe in the Rogan, day. They were like they were like, Yeah, um so he said, I can you drive me out to the forest? I have a kumite to go to and they drove him out there and he got out with all the stuff and went in the forest and came back like three hours later with like a trophy. It was like the next day. Yeah, or next and they're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 won that. Wait, I, was I, Joe I, Rogan? That was, was it Joe Rogan or Eddie no, Bravo? Eddie Bravo. And he's like, yeah. he's like, Yeah, I beat ten guys. I'm I'm paraphrasing by the way. So yeah. That guy was yeah, and he, he had fixed fights. It's like he fought a student. It was yeah. a work. It was a work. This is about 15 years ago, of course. He's in prison now. Yeah. He's gone. So that guy, yeah. right, this is an example of what it used to be like. Yeah. A guy could show up somewhere. Put and a black he, belt on. Yeah, put a black belt on and be like, yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a black belt. I got my black belt in Brazil. I trained down there for four years, and I'm a black belt, and I won this, and I won that. And he didn't win anything, and he oh. was just a liar. But these days, I'm telling you, if you find a, If you find a place online, it lists the instructors. The instructors' names are there. You can Google the instructors' names. You can see if they've, every instructor has competed at some point, right? I mean, if someone's, I would say 95% of instructors have done some competition at some point. There may be a few very small percentage of instructors that have never competed. Yeah. I don't even know if that's possible. If yeah. you if you Google your instructor, if your instructor has never competed, I would definitely mm. be suspect. It's possible, but yeah, yeah it's it, not it, likely. Com- competition, like I said, it, it, you can see how someone is and the truth, as yeah. you would say. One piece of advice I would give to people is, okay, I'm in Cleveland, whatever, or there's eight school, whatever, five. Go to each yeah. school. Don't say you live there. Say I'm visiting from. Yeah, it's a, you're lying, but it's a white lie. Yeah, it's okay. God will forgive you. You say, hey, listen, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a white belt. I'm from Florida. I'm just passing through. I have no experience. So you're not getting the sales pitch. You know, 
the instructor's representative, not his real self, is there trying to press you so you sign a contract. Signing a contract is okay, but if you believe in the, in the instructor, you like what he's saying, you like the environment. Because then as a visitor, you're going to see, like, this, this person's not trying to sell me mm-hmm. something. You can see how they actually are. And if you hear what they're saying, it's making sense to you, and you, you vibe with the energy or, let's say, the style or the personality of the, of the instructor, go, go to all five gyms in this and pay the day fee, 20, yeah. 30 bucks, and just try it and then come back which which one did you like best and then try it out and yes Jesus is awesome because also you're not getting hit in the head yeah you know and I love boxing boxing it's awesome I've done it at a high level I've fought Wolch I've sparred Bojowski I've sparred Krokop I've sparred uh, Jerome Le Banner who's also one of the best in history from France that's why I lived in France for one month that's how I learned some French you you, uh, you do get hit you get hurt and you only have one brain and it's not wrong, it's not bad. It's good to know everything, a little bit of something. But you can actually spar in jiu-jitsu without getting, you can spar every day basically, yeah. unless yeah. you're injured. Yeah. yeah. So that you, the damage, if you do get it, unfortunately, like any sport, is distributed around your body. Whereas in boxing, it's mostly your brain. Yeah. So it's okay, it's good to do all this stuff. I mean, I like it all. Uh, also, grappling in a self-defense scenario, I mean, even if it's more than one person, the fact that someone cannot easily put me on the ground, if two guys grab me, actually, like average guys, I could actually probably just win the fight, but with punches, but they're not gonna take me down that easy, okay? If someone grabs me from the side, I, I could I could throw them, <laughs> I could escape, and I could leave. Right. That's something you said, when made yeah. a lot of sense. If I decide I don't wanna fight, and you can't restrain me, I could leave. Yeah. I don't have to, and nowadays, with all the lawsuits and stuff like that, I mean, just making a fist is ammunition for a lawyer. That's that's a sign. Mm-hmm. Okay. Matter of fact, if you hit someone with an open palm, it's not in many jurisdictions. It's not the same. If you restrain someone, if you had to, and I and I, I call this at seminars. I, I I say this is a, a drunk uncle technique, because if you're at a wedding and your uncle's had too much drink, and every, every family has one of these uncles usually, <laughs> so they're like, I, I understand what you're saying, but he, you have to stop him. He's doing something that's really, let's say, not not cool. He's hurting someone. You could. Hold him without hurting him. You can't do that with boxing. Yeah, boxing is awesome, but you're gonna hurt someone, or maybe not. Uh, and uh, I, I know people who have hit people in fights. The guy falls, hits his head, and dies. I, I know people, and they're in trouble. And imagine your conscience. Uh, how do you yeah. feel about that? Right. That was so a big it's case all good here to in know. San Diego. Those surf ki- surfer kids. Uh, they knocked some kid out. I heard about this. And. Yeah. The guy just not knocked him out. It was exactly that. Knocked him, punched him in the head, fell down, hit his head on the curb, died. And and the dude, you know, went to prison. That's 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 whatever manslaughter or murder. So whereas if he would have just done a double leg, and choked the dude out, which is more, kind of more humiliating, I think in a way. Yeah. <laughs> it's a. It's a <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> yeah. I'm on the beach somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a good way to do it. Uh. So you find a good school. I always think that proximity is important too. Of course, you know, get something close to your. If you pick a school that's an hour away, you're not going to go as often. Yeah, you're gonna unless you're Jocko. Waste your time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I always, you know, we always picked schools that Back were. Back then, there close. were only two. There were two in San Diego County. Yeah. Now there's yeah. like eighty or something. Yeah. yeah there's a ton, a ton in San Diego. They're all over the place, though. There's jujitsu schools everywhere. You know, I think we've done a pretty good job of being apolitical. Yeah. At our yeah. gym. Yeah. Of just look, man. Guess what? We love jujitsu. We love to train jujitsu. We love to teach jujitsu. We love to roll jujitsu. If you fall into any of those categories, come and train. Come and get it. And we don't. You know, that's just kind of our attitude. Here's and, a quick, quick story, Jocko. You would appreciate it. And I'm not gonna say his name because, you know, uh, been training here for a few years. Nice, nice guy. Actually, came to me and said, "Hey, Dean." Um, I want you to know I really like training with you. You're my coach. Um, but I was I was invited by Andre Gavon for two months to come train with him for free. And, you know, said, okay, if I, and I'm like, yeah, man. It, first of all, most men wouldn't ask me that. They would mm-hmm. just go and do it. The fact you asked me, matter of fact, he's a friend of mine. I'm like, and he, he was like, he was very surprised. He thought I was gonna be mad or something. Um, but if he, if he actually went and didn't say anything, it would be a little awkward, which mm-hmm. has happened to us in the past, right? Some, someone does something weird and, um, it's a little bit, let's say, not polite or not correct. But that was, would that be taking ownership of the problem in his mind? He actually t- 
told me up front or yeah. asked me and I was like, yeah, right on. It was good. And I, I wasn't lying either. It, yeah. was, it wasn't me being like fake jealous. I was like, hey, he's a friend. He's awesome. He's a champion. Go. I said, I don't want to lose you as a student and a friend. I don't want you to come back. He's like, I'm coming back for sure. And so, yeah, we're not political at all. Yeah, I always found that just like it's capitalistic system in my opinion yeah. it's like go train where you're going to get the best training that, evil capitalism yeah, yeah evil yeah. capitalism like oh you 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 it's not you train where you get the best training and now there's a level of loyalty right i mean you don't just bail on people that you've trained with for a long time and there's yeah. a level of loyalty and that that's not like some level that you're holding a gun to someone's head it's like man you're been training with someone for a long time you keep training with them and you you have a relationship with them you know yeah. and you don't just throw that out the window because you think someone else is going to teach you a different move or something it's not you, you <laughs> that's not what i'm talking about um but it is a capitalistic system so you go train where you're going to get good training and and that's the way i that's the way i feel about it yeah and i think if you're somewhat confident in your ability let's say the environment you create that you're a part of uh, it's not so much of a threat for someone to go train somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. It's not a big that's, deal. that's why I'm like, cool. Yeah, yeah. go. Like, we, it's fine because we know what we do here, and other gyms. It's like, yeah, right on. Let's 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 train jujitsu is my overall philosophy of, of all this stuff. I, I had a female friend. Um, we we're a pretty girl, and we were about the same age. I mean, she was what one year older than me, and her first real boyfriend. I knew him too. It wasn't real close to him. He was very jealous, and she, I'm gonna go out with my girl, new kid, and, and she would do all the girlfriends, and he'd be mad, and they'd make up, they'd get in fights. They broke up eventually, a few years later, she actually dated a guy, and he was he was a cop, he was, but he was like 28, so she was 22, 28 year old guy, a little more mature than, mm-hmm. <laughs> than the guy, and the, she tried to pull the business with this guy. She said, I'm gonna go out with my girlfriends. He went, okay, sure, have a good time. And she's like, okay. She's trying to play this game with him, actually. So it, mm-hmm. was, it was an equal back and forth game with pre- pre- previous relationship. And I know inside information that she was playing. He was, it, it was a game, childish game. And um, she got ready and about to leave. And the guy said, hey, listen, um, you know, I like you. I like spending time with you. But uh, I'm just saying I, uh, I have my own expectations. And, you know, I don't really want to be with a girl who goes out all the time with her girlfriends. I mean, have a good time. Go have a good time. And she's like, wait, uh, I no, I don't want to go out. And she didn't go out. So it's funny how he actually let her go out and she didn't go out. The guy said, no, I don't want you going out. She went out. Of course. So, and I'm not saying <laughs> how to manipulate or, but that's, that's some psychology there. Yeah. Would there be a dichotomy there by chance? <laughs> yeah. A dichotomy? <laughs> I don't know. I, just felt, I felt like saying that word one time today. I don't know why. You had to say dichotomy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I say dichotomy a little too much. But, but, the, uh, but there you go. He asked me and I said, and, uh, by the way, I wasn't playing again with him. He wasn't playing again. I was actually sincere. I said, Right on, man. Have a good time and do it. It's a great training partner, great great camp. And he, I, I, I could see in his eyes he was very happy about the response. So, yeah, I think that's uh, taking ownership of the situation. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. It was good. For sure. Right on. Yeah, any, <laughs> I think we've been going two hours, man. Anything else? Uh, Back when you were saying when you used to train with Jocko at, <laughs> yeah. at Fabio's, and you said he was the kind where if you guys were would roll out of bounds – yeah. And when you come back inbound, what are you saying? He would want to reset? Like no, no, even, what, what even I mean Steven is, or stay? What I mean is if I have, let's say, uh, X person, so, so-and-so, and um, I have their arm on the ground, I have a Kimura halfway locked up, we roll out of bounds, and, okay, let go of it. Average person wants to start where you don't have the Kimura at all. Steven, yeah, yeah. Jocko's like, you had two arms on my on my yeah, arm, yeah. and, okay. and uh, I'm like, well, uh, no, I'm like, no, it's okay. But no, I, I had my arm on the ground. You had two arms, and I'm like, okay, God damn it! And I, and we'll argue to have the worst situation. Gotcha. Most okay. guys want to cheat, kind of. Yeah, 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 they, yeah exactly. Like, so well, I was wondering, was yeah. Jocko that kind? Because if you're super competitive in training, you'll pull that kind of stuff. Like Jocko like, now will pull. Not, not he won't cheat like that, but Jocko is a little more stingy, selfish. Greedy. Yeah, I, d- <laughs> I, I don't think I ever had that experience where you'd want to stay or like if you'd if you'd be in an inferior position, we go out of bounds, you go against the cage or something, oh, we yeah. restart, and then you want to start like even Steven. No, I, I've no. never had that. But the thing is, people do that all the time. Oh, like all, I all said. the time. So I was wondering, oh, maybe Jocko was like that. But so, no, 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 I didn't catch not. it. Someone did it to not. me the other day. Like, and yeah, yeah, and I was I was back. like oh okay yeah now, I was yeah, like you know are. I like yeah. we got close to the wall oh no we got close to another pe- people that were rolling and I was in like a good position yeah. I think I was actually a cross side and if I get cross side you you know you <laughs> yeah. know you're in that's, trouble that's, that's <laughs> gonna suck, yeah. and so 
and so we you know got a little close to these other people and and you know like well, their foot hit hit him or something yeah, he's like oh hold on move, yeah. so we're, we like we get a move and then he like kneels down right and right. I was like okay yeah but here's that's the thing. how huh okay so here's <laughs> the thing let's say someone does that to you what's the rule in your mind I'm sure this is you know you got the, you know you're, you're actually mentally in their head now are yeah. you allowed to say hey no I, I had the no, mount you or can I can say you that can, okay. but, but it's but more cool to be like that's the equivalent right. they, 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 they need to cheat yeah that's the equivalent of trying to of trying to be like no, you didn't have my arm all the way there. Yeah, You're like, yeah, oh, yeah. you want to start there? That's cool. Right, That's right. fine. Yeah, we'll yeah. do it. <laughs> we'll Funny do thing. It. And so, by the so way, the, you, this stuff just escalates cool. a So it's only bit. mental. It's all it's mental notes. Yeah. Yeah. You John, can't say it. I don't, know, I don't know how many, you know, these themes I have. Like, like I, I had this Venezuela jersey. I'm like, that's cool for Venezuela. Like, <laughs> I was just, I don't know. I these crazy themes with Jocko. And it, there, we have this moment. We have this cop. He has smack talking themes is what he has. Oh, yeah. Where he'll get, he he does like characters. Oh, yeah. Where he'll be a Venezuelan soccer player. Yeah, or I'll, be, I'll be a, or a, or a, a, a Russian officer. Or a Russian hero. Better than American, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll talk shit to him with an accent. But here's the thing. I'll man on Jocko. I'll be like, Jocko, if you want, I'll just, I'll just get up and you can. It's, a, it's okay. It's all right. Just, let, just tell me, Dean. Let, and Jocko will be like, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I did it with other guys before. If you want me to, like, yeah, th- thanks. I'm like, what? <laughs> I said it, and, and now I'm like, I lost my mouth, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just, I, I can't yeah. I'm like, actually, they don't know That's I'm right. joking. They don't know I'm joking. Bro, right. one yeah. of the best psychological yeah. warfare you did on me was like when you acted like you didn't want to train, but you were actually fired up because I had I'd kind of gotten the best oh, of you the day before. I think it was a, se- a morning or yeah, something. Yeah, it was the morning, and you're all like, yeah, I don't know if well, and you're like, and I got to go soon, and I was like. And in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, cool. I'll just get a quick round, mm-hmm. you know, five minute round, no big deal. <laughs> and then he was all in the game. <laughs> so he mounted. Were you there that day? No, he, you, ma- he mounted me like 30, for like 30, 30 minutes. minutes and was torturing me. Double snow angel. Was Double was snow that, angel. Was the I, whole was nine I, yards. Was it water torture? Was Chinese it? water torture oh, with the drips of sweat in my ear. Yeah. That left a mark. That one. What, what, one of the. Hey, it's it's really <laughs> jacked up though. It's really jacked up that I'm a grown man. <laughs> Um, I train jujitsu on a regular basis. I work out. I eat good food, mm-hmm. and yet you, Dean Lister, can get a position on me that I can't get out of. That's not cool, man. I don't like that. No, uh, hey, you have your days too. By the way, you smack talk sometimes too. You you do the what arresting? You do that to me sometimes, but that's a uh, retali- retaliation. I, it's, reta- it's retaliatory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> there, are, there there are. You have you have three positions you can get on me and and crush me. Sprawl, I have two, cross side and mount. Yes, and I have two. I it's can. Funny, I used to have, get the back. I can hold on you now. I really can't hold it. Yeah, like you can get out of that. But the but I only have two, so I can only talk smack in two. Oh, and sprawl, sprawl yeah, out. and sprawl, yeah. So, um, yeah, interesting uh, element of your smack talking as well. Sometimes it it'll transcend the mats. Like you can go home and get like voicemails. Oh from yeah, him. yeah. Oh, still Jocko, talking Jocko loves smack voicemails. To you, by the way, yeah. <laughs> so it's real interesting. Very, uh, Jocko, very advanced. Jocko, uh, I'm sure sick of. I I used to just spam his phone up with just. <laughs> I send like videos and or pictures or, oh man, one of the funniest. He's ones, saying used to like he didn't do this like uh, two yeah, days no, ago. Yeah, you mean he used to <laughs> earlier today? One of yeah. the funniest ones, and this is just kind of unique. I don't know why. I'm like I'm gonna do something weird today. And I, I was feeling good though. I'm like I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck with Chaco's head. And I'm like I get a position and I would go twenty two point five. And Chaco's like what the fuck? And I'd take you down to like eighteen and just ran. Like, and Chaco's like what the fuck are you doing? I'm like I'm like no comment. I'm like. <laughs> I'm like 99.3, and it's, yeah, it's, and it, it gotta be something in your head. Like, what's he doing? Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, yeah. I, I, t- I completely turn your, your <laughs> volume off, and I put you on mute in my head. But that was what, uh, what accent is the most annoying for you? Um, man, I don't know. I don't know what it's accent. The Russian. You, it's this way. The Russian's pretty good. The Russian. Get the mouth on you. Come out the ski. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or, or Arnold. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It's just yeah, but yeah, he just gets used to it. Yeah, it doesn't mm-hmm. doesn't impact him too much. Psyops. I tr- well, just. that's my psyops is I try not to show any reaction whatsoever. Yeah. That's actually funny. Dave Burke was watching. Good deal, Dave. Yeah, good deal, Dave <laughs> was watching Andy and I roll, and he afterwards he was like, you know, it was cool to watch you roll because first of all, like it didn't even look like anything I've been training, right? Because you guys were just 
getting crazy and he goes and I saw uh, I saw like emotion or, or I saw facial emotions on you and I was like what do you mean he's like you normally just look like the same mm-hmm. all the time and then when you're training or when I was training I was training with Andy and he was like get, get yeah. some some you know some faces <laughs> and trying yeah. to move and all that mm-hmm. and uh, so yeah that's yeah, one of those that's things thing. that's, that's what, one of those things that's why I know that whatever I'm doing is micro successful when you increase your sense of urgency yeah because you, you're all normal face you, the whole time yeah even normal, normal, face, normal, normal body. face normal face normal yeah, body yeah, yeah. and then occasionally you make me scramble a little bit yeah, yeah, yeah. make so me you think know. about something because you can't that's the thing you know you're getting to a point where i can't just allow some little some little situation to occur yeah because i can go to it's like the the uh the event horizon right on yes. a, on a black hole like oh if i let this it's done yeah if i let this go it's going it's going to go yeah. and and the better you get the the more i got to pay attention to where that event yeah. arises <laughs> to make sure i don't get myself in a situation where you know mm-hmm. we got a problem on our hands <laughs> you want to hear an echo charles story so i uh yeah i i smack talk you a little not not the same extreme yeah. as jocko but last time we actually was it last time maybe and I'm like, I didn't let you pass, but I was kind of like lackadaisical, like, oh, he's cross side. And I went, hey, Echo, here's my arm. And usually he's like, there's something wrong. Like, uh, it's, there's a trap. And usually there is a trap. I was just talking smack. And Echo's like, oh, okay. I'll take that arm. And I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> he called my bullshit. Because you, know, <laughs> you know me enough, you know. Because most guys go, there's something, there's some reason he's giving me the arm. That's, you know. And you were like, yeah, yeah you're not just going to give me an arm. You're like, there's a trap here. <laughs> you're like, but, yeah. He, he like, but I knew that. Like, you know why? Because <laughs> you were talking smack the whole time we were rolling. The whole time. Yeah. So I was it's like, funny, oh, too. It's funny this. that for anyone that's listening that thinks that Dean might be this big smack talker, the funny thing is, is that you only, only talk my, smack only to my your bros. friends. Yeah. 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 And it's my friends actually, that, yeah. a lot of times when you teach moves, you're like, this is a move that you would only do to someone that's a you're, very you're, good friend of yours or, your enemy. or someone that you hate, yeah, 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 which yeah. is really kind of jacked up if you think about it. Yeah. Like, oh, he doesn't mind grinding his elbow into my ribs. temple yeah, for yeah. three or my ribs yeah, yeah. because because I'm his bro, right, allegedly. Right. So, he, but he won't do it to someone he doesn't really know that well because that yeah, wouldn't be, you cool. know, that's not cool. Yeah. But if you if he hated me yeah, or yeah. if he was friends with me, then, he, then I'm going to get elbows to the ribs while he's trying to come near me. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah, but it yep. and really when you really think about it, your smack talking is never ever like serious. Oh yeah, yeah, like, and it's true. never like oh, I'm the greatest. And you saw it's not that. It's all your Arnold impressions or the, your policeman or you know all these <laughs> all these things. It's all like literally jokes, but Stop the jokes resisting. are new kind of thing. They're yeah. not always that funny when it's occurring to you. <laughs> That's the genius of it, though. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love when I, when when the tables turn. Oh yeah. Uh, when the tables turn, you do the cop to me too. If you're if you're it. talking smack. <laughs> and I can get the tables to turn. Oh man, that's when I have no mercy. It's it's got to be shocking to some people. It, either one of us, when you and I are training. Oh man, people are like, what the, yeah. you're going. Raw, raw, raw. Yeah. <laughs> like, look at the wall. Don't look at the wall. Look at the wall. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is awesome. The, the two you do it in like in reprisal to me are the 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 cop. You'll do that. <laughs> but in like revenge, like if he gets it like, all right, sir, I'm like, God damn it. He's like, <laughs> you're, in my, you're in the wrong neighborhood today. I'm like, God, <laughs> I'm like, God damn it, I am, you know? I want to get out of this neighborhood. It's not cool. And he'll also do the, I'll do it to, I'll start, I'll, I'll light the fire and he'll like, I'll be like, oh, that's your guy here. I, I'll, I'll do like a, a, a bad Brazilian accent. And when you get on top, you're like, oh, oh, you, you do it back to me. I'm like, God damn it. I don't like, you're right. I don't like how it feels. I'm like, I want to reverse to where I was, not to where I'm at right now. It's horrible. Those it's are awful. your two. Yeah. Right on, man. Well, like I said, we've been going for a little over two hours. Uh, so, do you need anything else? Not just, uh, hey, my bro's here and everyone had victory in May. You know, like Jocko said, I mean, there's been some rough times and pfft, yeah, some, 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 uh, unique things that I've been through and you know that's how you know you have real bros real team stick by my side and you know help me actually you know if I can help them as well I know they know that you know my, my dad he actually you know d- did not bring him easy I'm not saying he, w- he was a real good dad but he you know I know it's not popular to say this nowadays but it may be tough I mean you know uh hey you got to fight hey did you fight hard 
did you fight hard? Not, oh, poor you, oh, you know, we're going we're gonna to make a complaint. You know, I'm not making some statement of saying my dad was awesome, old Marine, right? Didn't you say that if you weren't a SEAL, you would be a Marine? That we were, we were saying someone said that I'd say there's a really good percentage that if I didn't join the SEAL teams, I would have gone in the Marine Corps. Yeah, yeah. I'd say that's a pretty good, yeah, pretty good assessment. Yeah, so my, my dad was kind of like how you raised Thor, like you know, you're gonna do this, and, and yeah, you don't force Thor, but you, you kind of encourage him to do certain things, and that's how my dad was. That's yeah. another little torture that you do with Thor oh, with my oh, son. With uh, <laughs> I don't what know why that come I, from? I, go, I go, um, I don't know why I just go, um. Hey Thor, what's your favorite food? And, and he'll go like, "Oh, uh, steak." I'll be no. <laughs> <laughs> and then he attacks. I'll grab him. I'll throw him down, and I'll be like, "It's piggies in a blanket." He's like, "No, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> say it now." He's like, "All right, it's piggies." No, say it, pig. Hey, it's in a blanket. And, I, and he'll go, "Piggies." He said it wrong. Say it slow. Sing it. Pig, hey, it's in a blanket. And he'll be like, "No, okay, piggies in a blanket." No, say it right. And I'll and just torture him. Where did you? Just, where where does that know, come from? I have no idea. It's just, it's just <laughs> something I thought of first. <laughs> I don't. I have no idea why. It's just hey, hey, and like I just think of themes, you know. Hey, so, and then the, like oh, it. oh, he caught on like the fourth time. He's like, all right, pick it. Oh my god, you said it correctly. <laughs> so you earned the privilege of letting me let go of you right now. Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's that's you know, old brothers got to do that. You know, it's just the way it is. That's how it is, man. That's how it is. One day the pecking order will be reversed, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. Thor's taller than me now. I know. Damn. Well, I saw you. You you went to take him down whatever it was well, the first time he actually defended crap i'm like god damn he's defending him yeah. I, I went to double like i'm like dude he actually said it. <laughs> <laughs> he threw the hip and i was like oh yeah had to turn up the heat good. awesome man well uh uh echo it looks like i think uh everyone's gonna be training jujitsu now yes. everyone Hopefully. is gonna get on that path how yes. can we get on that path stay on that path you know yeah whatever I'll something you know. like that yeah so jujitsu if you do gi, which we recommend, mm -hmm. we recommend both fully, gi, no fully, gi, right? Fully, fully, fully do. Okay, so gi's, Absolutely. boom, get an origin gi. Get an origin gi, 100%. No, you don't even have to shop around. Are there some ones that don't rip at all or something like that? Uh, I don't know that they rip. I've never see, witnessed one rip, ever. I've never witnessed one even come close to ripping or even having the sound of ripping sounds. Um, By the way, that's an investment because, I, Jocko, how many gi's have we gone through? Like A eight. lot of gi's. Yeah. So hey, yeah. I've ripped yeah. someone's gi in a match, by the a way. A lot of geese. Hey, awesome. Yeah, nice. you, I think you taught me that. Anyway, get so, origin gi. That's the made all made in America from the thread, from the cotton, <laughs> all the way to the actual gi, all made in America, assembled in America. And also, if you're going to train no gi, yeah, which we also recommend, right? Yes, yeah, we yeah, do. fully. Absolutely. You can get a a rash guard, which <laughs> is very good for training jujitsu with because it's compression. And it doesn't get caught up toes, Your fingers, fingers. fingers yeah. So you can get that. Yeah, it's true. The uh, the rash guards, and yeah. they are also made a hundred percent in in America. Yeah. So where, where we go is go you, where you go is online originmain.com. It's in Maine, um, and yeah, you can get sweats, shirts, you know, lifestyle right. stuff, apparel, real cool stuff. Did all you made say in America. lifestyle stuff? Hey, man, I said it. Okay. I said it. We'll leave that one with right, you. It is lifestyle, Brad. Jiu-Jitsu transcends style, the mats once you find the, the way broadly. You see it in all things. Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? I don't think I see the. I don't think I see the way in joggers. I'm just saying, if you do jujitsu, <laughs> it's it's gonna be your lifestyle. Is what I'm saying. You see what I'm uh, saying? You Dean knows what I'm saying, huh, Dean? Oh yeah. yeah. There you go. Boom. Also supplements. Okay, Jocko has supplements. Good news. Jocko has supplements. Oh yeah. You had uh, surgery on your shoulder. Same day I had surgery. Yeah. By the way. Actually, thanks for for. He gave me. He hooked me with some some gear. Oh. Not gear. What joint it's warfare? Nutrition. Yes. Yeah. So that's gonna help. You see, like mine is way. Remember, okay, I did my other side too. My bicep. Yeah, yeah. This one's mm. healing way faster. Like night yeah. and day, way crazy faster. Anyway, joint warfare. So supplements. Jocko has, thankfully, joint warfare, glucosamine conjoint. You know, grappling. Yeah. We always kind of yeah. knew about that. The krill uh, oil. Curcumin, and then also Jocko super krill oil. Which is good for your joints. So as lubrication well. of the joints. Lubrication, omega threes, whatnot. Other good benefits for that too. And Organs. If, and you can get discipline. Yeah. Not just regular discipline, but a supplement called, called discipline, discipline, which is good for the <clears throat> pre mission situation. situation. Dave Burke. Good deal, Dave. Good deal, Dave. He's on the discipline. Yeah. So, a lot. So here's the thing about discipline. Go, sit, okay, so I'm like, all right, that's not an everyday deal for me, discipline. Oh. So I'm like, oh, no, I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. cool, I'm down. Um, so I'm like, all right, so let me do the three scoops. 
Oh, you did. I hear. I heard. I heard some good things about the three <laughs> scoops. So I did the three scoops, and and here's the thing: I wasn't like tired or nothing like that. I wasn't like, oh, I need this specific label. Let me just do the three scoops. Good for your. You just decided brain. to get on the program Let me a little just bit. Do this. Got to do it. So, I get in the three scoops. Boom. I go, and here's one thing that like I, I wasn't necessarily trying to pay attention to am i remember am i sharp i I wasn't trying to really paying attention to that i was just going to take it and be like okay what happens this is what i noticed what stuck out to me my patience like you know when patience increased in increase in life so like that's interesting you you might think that your patience would go down because you're all amped up but you don't get that way but it's not it's i mean it's slightly caffeinated microdose of caffeine but it's not no like maybe Maybe caffeine might make you like that, maybe, but um, because it's not that. I don't, I don't know what the mechanism is that made me patient, but I really, you know, how like through the day you'll get, you know, it'll get tested, things won't go your way or whatever. Mm-hmm. I felt like, oh man, it's all good. Like man, so I'm there's problem solving something and in a, there that's giving you emotional discipline. Yeah, like, like it's it. like <laughs> it's like making my mind like pro- solve problems rather than like be all. You know how you have little micro reactions inside, internally. I mean, I'm not no, a bad I don't behavior kid. <laughs> Whatever. <bro. laughs> it felt like I could manage that like really good. It was like really easy to manage that. Yeah. That's what it felt like the, on the three scoops. That's my three scoops. That's what happened. Boom. Either way, discipline. That's a good discipline. One. Mulk. Mulk. Oh, is, I'm on the mulk that, train. Is that, is that Viking or something like mulk? It's actually a word that I literally created. Yeah. So we were I testing too, to make seems, something. Seems like, yeah. And I was like, hey, man, this has to taste really good. And it has to have a great profile nutritionally. And when we, fi- when I finally got the sample where I wanted it, and Pete and Brian were like, oh, yeah, it's so good. And they sent me my, I was like, oh, it's so good. And I'm thinking, well, it's not even a protein drink. It's something else. It's milk. It is, right. but it isn't. So kind of it's just a word. That so it's it, not it a is. protein drink, it but it happens to have 22 grams of protein in one scoop. Per scoop. And tastes like like a for real Has milkshake. probiotics or something, too? Has probiotics. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> it does have yeah. probiotics. You saw, you saw that. Mm-hmm. And oh. peanut butter chocolate is now also available. It's, it's a big hit. In my household, oh, brown mine too. I'm like, <laughs> brown. It's fine. That's all I had to eat today. By the way, I had a, I had milk, a uh, triple milkshake milk. I put some heavy cream in there too. Oh, Not a lot, just a little bit. I know, super it's hard. hardcore. <laughs> and then, um, oh, I know, I had a worry bar too. But okay. that's all I had today. But I'm on the milk train. Big the time. milk train is deep. Oh yeah, it's like it's like a it's a protein supplement and a dessert so if you're like hey i'm lifting i'm rolling i'm working out hard you eat dinner you can have a dessert boom that's a protein supplement right there too. yeah, yeah. The, the the double peanut win. butter not okay i i the, the mint is delicious but let's face it i've been drinking nothing but mint milk mm-hmm. for whatever how long ever long it's been <laughs> released for <laughs> so <laughs> now all of a sudden i've got a little option yeah the new yeah and it's new you know how it the is. new exciting it is new but it's know? also just too right. yeah when you open well, here's what's here i'll tell you what when you open up either one of those two and you smell them yeah. you know you know you're, you know you're <laughs> you know you know things 100%. are about to get real good yeah real good either one of them can you hook me with some vanilla next time we're working I, vanilla we're it, working yeah it. i have oh, some damn. vanilla you like vanilla for real yeah no kidding <laughs> I, yeah, I made the vanilla. I gave him to my son. He's two, by yeah. the way. All and right. I think he thought it was like a for real milk, sh- like a dessert. Yeah. And he was like, oh, he's all like crying for it. I have a video. I sent it to <laughs> Pete for real. It's funny. Right. By the way. And then that uh, was vanilla. It's not just going to be vanilla, though. Got to be vanilla something. It's vanilla gorilla. <laughs> 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 it right. is for real. All right, Pete, there you go. Boom. Pete, Pete was like, are you serious? And I was like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> of course. And he goes, he goes, what do you mean? I said, put a white gorilla on there, yeah. the vanilla gorilla. It's yeah. coming. I, I, would, I would expect so much from Jocko. Yeah. yeah, makes sense. Yeah, so we took a picture of you, Dean, and put, <laughs> put you on here. You yeah, vanilla gorilla. Put the white, yeah. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, hey, the immersion camp, by the way, mm-hmm. that Dean will be at. And yes. I would say come, but if you didn't already sign up, you're not going to be there because uh, it's sold out. No kidding. Yeah, official so sold out. Official sold out. Yeah. We'll be doing it next year. We'll try and get, you know, come next year. We'll try and expand it a little bit, but it's sold out. Damn. Sorry. Next time. Next yeah, time. but those are next fun, man. Time. I was, I talk about that with people very often because they want to go. Anyway, mm-hmm. it's good. Also, good way to support and support yourself and represent. Boom, three things. Boom, boom, boom. Jocko has a store. <laughs> 
called Jocko Store. Jocko so you go store. to jockostore.com, right? Makes All sense. Right. Anyway, this is where you can get the shirts, the uh, hoodies, some more rash guards, more Jocko representative, you know, kind of a little bit more direct message on that one, but some good stuff if you want to represent. Uh, yeah, go there, jockostore.com. Truckers hats. Yeah, that's good. Whatever. Flex fit hats. Flex fit. For the nouveau. Snap back. The nouveau chic. That's what flex, flex fit are? Nouveau chic. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, hoodies, legit hoodies and lightweight hoodies. Yeah, the lightweight hoodies. Here's the thing, bro. You made me like stutter step on the lightweight hoodies. So like I have them, and, but they're not like in the pipe yet. Oh, okay. But well, good. Keep them out of the pipe. I want the... Like, no, nah, they're going no, in the pipe. No, There's people that... There's, there is people. There are yeah. people. A lot of support for the lightweight. Yeah. Everyone in Hawaii. <laughs> sure. Yeah, everybody. A bunch of people in Florida. Sure. Yeah. You know? Texas sometimes too. But yeah, that's a good way to support and represent. Like I said, DrakoStore.com. Also, good way to support is to subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. Seems obvious, I know. But on iTunes and Stitcher. Seems real obvious since Google you've been Play. saying this for 137 <laughs> episodes. And I think I even say it seems obvious yeah, every single yeah, time. Every but time you say it seems obvious. That makes kinda, it even more obvious. Which <laughs> makes, yeah, exactly right. But my point even more seems obvious because I say it all the time and... That's just kind of how with podcasts you subscribe to the podcast. That's how everyone. Do you that. think that you when you say things a certain way and then then you just think that's the best way to say it and you're just gonna keep saying it? Yeah, that way? yeah, it ain't broke. Don't fix it, kind of thing. <laughs> even though it kind of is broke because you look at me like it's broke every single time. Hey, Either way, w- when you're signing up for podcasts, don't forget that there's also the Warrior Kid podcast. Yeah, and you can subscribe to that one too. You can play it for your kids. There's some stories on there. There's yeah. some Q and A for Uncle Jake, yeah. which you know. It's good. Yeah, I like the stories. So, okay, those stories, I have to sh- I shorten it sometimes, but all those stories I tell my daughter before. You know, you have bedtime stories. Uh, you know, now you have a story now. Yeah. You know how, like, right? Do you, do you make yourself the first person character? <laughs> or do you say, this happened to no. Uncle Jake? No, I don't need, I actually don't even say Uncle Jake. So, how do you I make up different names. Oh, I make up different me. names. Yeah, yeah. You think she's buying that? Yes. She's like, you ripped this off from Jocko, dude. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, Dad, come on. Where are you at? No, 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 no. She knows. And here's the thing. They're oh, interesting. you were running a race? Oh, okay. No, I don't say me. No, I don't say me. I say, look, there was this girl. You owe me money. Yeah, kind That's of. Well, like thinking. a royalties <laughs> like scenario. But here's, <laughs> you say someone else was running the race. You say it's a story oh, about somebody. Yeah. And here's the important thing. And but hasn't she heard the Warrior Kid podcast? No. Oh, you no. you evil. No, you holding out know. on her and you're taking my stories and now you're making them your own. <laughs> and one day she's going to listen to me and be like, well, oh, a, she stole the story from you, daddy. What's bad is I didn't realize I was doing that, but technically that is what, ha- is what, hap- what happened. That's cold-blooded. But either way, if they don't hear those stories on the podcast for whatever reason. Because you're holding hey, out on them or you whatever, take credit. Or what have you. You have stories to tell and you know they're going to come with that lesson that's what i think is yet another element of value immense value of Warrior Kid podcast. we threw some of those stories on the uh on the youtube channel yes the jocko podcast youtube channel and there's a warrior kid podcast or uh youtube, YouTube channel so go to youtube subscribe to that if you want to see echoes legit videos which apparently he has some in the hopper that mm-hmm. he's going to be releasing so we're looking forward to that as well which should be good. Yeah. Get them out there. I think so. Also, on it. Okay, on it.com slash Jocko. This is where you can get your kettlebells. I got some heat for calling them artistic kettlebells. Actually, it wasn't you heat. called them that for seven yeah, months. It, it what wasn't are you heat. It about? wasant heat. It was like a, an intro or an What's offering. That? What's what? an artistic, artistic kettlebell? kettlebell? You know, like primal bells, the ones that look like... They have, like, like faces on them. Oh. Yeah, yeah, have, I'm talking about from on it. Cyclopses you know, like you get the, on them. Yeah, they're the gorilla. The or gorillas the, or the were for, Here's the thing. <laughs> bro, they're... Bro, don't even tease, bro. They're the best. No, Try I got you just cams. Do, do, you do, do you do kettlebells? Cams. I used to. Yeah, the okay. shoulder I can't What, the boring round one? Yeah. So you get the... The werewolf one <laughs> is way better. Yeah, and All it right. even looks better. Anyway, they're cool. And, and you get it from on it, so there's that. I got rings, and there's a bunch of other work, cool workout They're stuff. Legit. Kettlebells are awesome. Yeah, good. Yeah. yeah, but if they look awesome, that's even more awesome. Plus, well, they sell the regular ones, too, yeah. by the way, but yeah. that's a, a lot of information, too, yeah. on the website, on it.com. Plus, slash. psychological war, psychological warfare, and we're working on the second album, but that's on iTunes if you want to hear me talking about when to get after it instead of being a little baby and succumbing to your own pathetic horrible laziness and weakness. weakness yeah 
cool. Yeah, there's that. Yeah. Also, there's there's white tea. Yeah, jock white tea in cans too, by the way, if you yeah. like tea in a can or if you just like the whole idea of holding a can, you know, like how you do with the energy drinks or whatever. JP told me today, he's like, God, can you just pay me in jocko white tea? Because, <laughs> you know, he's an echelon front. Uh. And I'm like, brother, we can make it happen. Yeah, man. He's ordering jocko white tea, which is awesome. Like I said, it's awesome because, as I said last time, JP he used to get on those energy drinks <laughs> yeah, big yeah. time. Yeah. Both. And now he's just getting on a little Jocko White tea. Dean's been hammering the Jocko yeah. White tea. And you're also Correct. an energy drink guy. Um, yeah, those those were the days where it wasn't regulated, you know, speed. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Efe, uh, ephedra yeah. tea. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, it's not or good the for drink. You. Not good for you. Hey, not do good. you drink tea like in normal, like everyday life? Are you a tea no. drinker? Yeah, no. that's weird, right? Me yeah. too, but I pound these. I pound these all the time. How's this? No, so. I, st- I stopped. I stopped using like the, the Red Bull type stuff. That's not really. Yeah, you know, and yeah. what? And this is like a transition. Yes, kind of thing I that. had. Makes sense. I had uh, an a, like an energy type drink the other day, mm-hmm. and because I was yeah. driving and I needed a little bit of energy, mm-hmm. and it was like one of those ones, and it said, you know, like all the all the little buzzwords yeah. on it: healthy, natural, yeah. blah 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 blah. So I drink this thing, and all of a sudden. 30 minutes later, I feel like I'm gonna start stabbing like the road <laughs> with a battle axe and attacking people <laughs> And I go what the? it had 200 milligrams caffeine. of caffeine yeah. 200 milligrams of caffeine. Yeah, that's gonna get you bro. Especially you're not what are you doing? That. Don't give me all that. Are you psycho? Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's their fault. Yeah. No, yeah, you're right. You're right It's oh, all their man. fault. So not your fault at all. No, 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 no. Oh, all good. Yeah. How's this? So my wife she's, the, she's on the path my wife big time Mm-hmm. Actually, now just like boom on the path, hardcore. Boom. So I look. Listen to that podcast, bro. I looked on her phone and it has the podcast oh, on, and she's she's, she's the kind where it's game. like she's What's in the game, and out? that's the kind where it's like, hey, Echo, I'm listening to the podcast. It's not that. No, she's, she's like just on her own, clandestine. on her own kind of thing. And I'm like, oh man. So I'm like, okay. The other day, okay, this is just in, this was maybe, this maybe to start maybe three four weeks ago, right? Just in the game. So the other day, I hear I'm like in the side, not in the next room, but kind of like to the side like mm-hmm. i'm not in her visual like mm-hmm. thing. so her you know how people they'll, they don't, i'm not saying my wife talks to herself i'm not mm-hmm. saying that but you know how you say something you say oh oops yeah. you made a mistake just kind of under your breath kind of stuff mm-hmm. she's like no she, <laughs> she goes <laughs> she, she pops another one of these cans she's like i love this stuff like Ooh, to herself my yeah not to me she was Dang. like on her own like popping them and yeah she's she, she's pounding this this stuff so it's interesting i ask here's the thing she is kind of a tea drinker. Right. She likes like Did, tea and if stuff. You, okay, if it was a blind, double blind test, yeah. and you just you just came into a room and you had never drank this before, and and you picked up a cup, somebody put it in your hand and put it in your mouth, would you say it was tea? I would, but I'm not like a hey, that's that's tea. You know, I'm not yeah. a tea drinker. That's why I, asked, I was asking if you're a yeah. tea drinker because I know so it tastes like, like tea. Yeah. If you drink tea, but if it was just if it was just like you in a in a store and grabbed a can and you open, you'd be like, "Oh, this is interesting." You wouldn't maybe necessarily know it was tea. Maybe. Yeah. Mm. Well, don't say that in England. Yeah. Cold tea is like That's really weird. Yeah, yeah, it's evil over there. Yeah, they think it's yeah. evil. Oh, it's bad thing. Okay. Yeah, no, they, well, like, they just don't drink it. They yeah. drink their tea warm and or hot and with milk in it. Do you put milk in that? Do no. <laughs> right, it seems no. like like a psycho yeah. thing to do uh, with this one. Don't do that. Nonetheless, it's good. Hey, I got some books. Um, Way of the Warrior Kid books for your kid. There's one of them that's called Way of the Warrior Kid. Then the second one in that series is called Mark's Mission. Got the Discipline Equals Freedom Field Manual. If you need to know how to get after it, that's where you find out how to get after it. The audio version of that book, you get it on iTunes as an MP3 or Amazon Music or Google Play or whatever. Also got Extreme Ownership. That's about combat leadership written by by me and my brother Leif Babin and on September 25th the dichotomy of leadership comes out the dichotomy of leadership It's a follow-up Leif and I wrote it follow-up to extreme ownership Dives in and gets granular on how to balance the opposing forces of leadership so that you and your team Can win dichotomy you like that word? Yeah, <laughs> Dean's all smiling. When <laughs> no, I was waiting it. for you to say it. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I said it once. I only said it once this podcast, which is weird because I yeah. should have said it a bunch. Because in jujitsu, you've got to be aggressive, but there's a dichotomy because you can't be too aggressive. Yeah, you got to be offensive, but at the same time, you've got to also there's a dichotomy because you got to be defensive, right? You got to train with the gi, but there's a dichotomy because you've also got to train without that gi, right? 
Yeah. yeah. So there's a dichotomy there. Gi and no gi, both are very important. Yeah. So you got to do it. Uh, leadership consulting company, Echelon Front. We solve problems through leadership. Whatever problem you have at your company, at your team, it's a leadership problem. I'm, I'm telling you that right now. It's a leadership problem. Mm-hmm. On some level, it's a leadership problem. If you want help with that, you got me, Leif Babin, JP Dinell, Dave Burke, Flynn Cochran, and now Mike Sorelli as well. And that's what we do. We come work with your company and get those leadership problems solved, which will solve whatever inherent problems are within your team, your company, your business. Muster 006 in San Francisco, California, October 17th and 18th. All the other ones have sold out. This one is apparently on track to sell out even faster than all the other ones. So if you want to come to that, go to extremeownership.com. Get registered. We'll see you up there. Leadership seminar, two days of granular, practical leadership. It's not It's not a motivational thing. <laughs> you can do this. And I'm not saying you won't be motivated because I get motivated, but, mm. but we're not there going like, how can we motivate these people? Well, that's not even, that's, no. that, that, that word's not even said at any point. Yeah. At all. Neither is you can do it. Yeah, I, neither I don't is you can do it. You ever say that <laughs> no, ever? No. But you have the strength today. You are a strong person. <laughs> yeah. You believe in yourself. You yeah. are great. Yeah. For, sure. Is, For sure, is, he doesn't say that. That is not what external. is happening. <laughs> that is not what is happening. We we talk about leadership, and leadership is the most important thing on the battlefield. It's the most important thing in your business, and it's the most important thing in your life. So, if you want to come and learn some pragmatic leadership skills. Then come to the muster. Also, for current law enforcement, military, border patrol, firefighters, paramedics, first responders, all of you out there in uniform, we got roll call number 001. It's our first roll call. We're having the roll call because the muster's two days, it's pricey, and we wanted to offer something to military law enforcement, to the folks out there in uniform, to come and get a condensed version focused on the dynamic leadership situations that you all face. That's September 21st in Dallas, Texas. You also register for that at extremeownership.com. And also, we now have EF Overwatch, Echelon Front Overwatch, EFOverwatch.com. Okay, so this is it. We've been working with companies for all these years. All these years, we've been working with all these various different companies and all these companies, we work with them and help their leadership. Well, they want to hire leaders. They want to bring leaders on board. We were also in the military. All of us at Echelon Front were in the military and we have connections with a lot of people that were in the military that that want to go work at jobs with great companies. So in order to connect those two groups, people that want jobs and people that need leaders in their business, go to efoverwatch.com to get in the game. And you can either register as someone that's looking for a job, it's focused on special ops folks and combat aviation, those types of what we're looking at right now, we're gonna broaden that out and, and put together another company in the very near for another arm of this company. And but that's where we're starting because that's that the basically the reason we're starting there is because that's the element that we have connections with. And so as we expand and we're working this right now to get the lines of communication open in the other branches of the military so that we can bring on board you know f- uh, other folks but again this is we started with the groups that we know so if you're in those groups go register if you're getting ready to retire if you're looking at getting out and you don't know what you're going to do next we need leaders america needs leaders these businesses need experienced leaders that understand the principles we talk about the principles that are ex- in extreme ownership the things that you learned in combat, the things you learned leading troops on the battlefield, your skills are needed. So hit us up, efoverwatch.com, get registered, get in the game, and we'll get you, uh, get your next mission. Talk about having your next mission all the time. We will get you your next mission. We got a bunch of companies that are, <laughs> they need you. And if you wanna spend some time with us virtually, until we're rolling, until we're rolling at the muster, or we're rolling in Texas, or we're rolling in, at the immersion camp. Until then, we're all, all up on the interwebs. Dean, Dean Lister, 
Dean is at on Instagram. Dean is at Dean Lister BJJ. That's right. On Twitter, you might not even remember this. Yeah. On Twitter, you're Dean underscore Lister. I looked huh. up to see if you had Twitter. You had a post. You, your your last post was in 2010. 2010. Oh, okay. Probably. Did Twitter exist in 2010? <laughs> yeah, I'm not even kidding. It did, I thought Twitter was like three years old. No, that's. Has it been around that long? When was it yes. invented? Obviously, before 2010. Yeah, well, yeah makes sense. Not I three didn't years ask. Ago. I knew that. Yeah. Well, because you just kind of said you didn't. No. But you know, hey man, all good. Yeah. More than three <laughs> years ago. Factually. <laughs> uh. And uh, Facebook, you do you do Facebook, yeah, yeah more, yeah, for you sure. You do Instagram, sure. yeah, Instagram more now. Facebook, it, there's there's one that's like a fan, you know, they make the audit generate one for you if you find a USC or whatever, it, or if you have a certain amount of friends. I have a personal one. It's me and my mom, my sister in the cage, and there's not, uh, there was another one. I don't know who who it is. Me. And, Remember, you made me. No, you didn't make me, but you asked me to set you up one like eight, yeah. ten years ago. Yeah, but the, there's another one. Oh, another one on top of that. That, that okay. someone. It's actually post things about me, but I'm what's like, the I'm real like, one? It's a uh, just Dean Lister. Dean but, Lister. Yeah, it's just that's me in a cage with my my mom and my sister. Yeah, that right one. on. Yeah, right on. Uh, and that's where you can find us. And of course, Echo is at Echo Charles in all mediums. Yes, and I am at Jocko Willing. Echo, you got anything else? No. Nope. Pretty cool to hang with Dean in this capacity. You know, like, I see literally every time I come here, pretty much. Yeah. Literally, pretty much. I see you, you know, whatever. By the way, you're my first, actually, your class was my third jujitsu class. Really? Oh, was yeah, it down at Chula Vista? Yeah, Chula Vista, okay. in that half deal. Oh, yeah, Emery coming yeah. in here. You, 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 were, you were strong back then, too. Have strong. you ever heard him tell that? So, like, he thought he could take you, kind of. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I told my oh, story yeah, like, yeah. a couple oh, times. Yeah, thought, me and Cake Nuts. No, no, well, no, no, okay. So the me and Cake Nuts story is different. So it was like, <laughs> when I for the first time I ever rolled with you, you were like, yeah, yeah, come roll. Like, you know. You, yeah. And I was like, yeah, what? Like, how, how, this is literally what I thought. <laughs> how embarrassing is it going to be? And uh, how awkward is it going to be if, like, I get Dean today? <laughs> like, that's all, what I was thinking. Like, I was literally not to sit, <laughs> it wasn't like this fantasy. Yeah, it's, I it's was fun. literally worried about the awkwardness. <laughs> So that's how real it was to me. I didn't. I'm not saying I was gonna get you, but to me there was a chance. But I was like, yeah, yeah it's okay. Yeah. You know, he'll he'll respect that if that happens. I'm not saying it will, but it might. Kind of thing. Right when you, yeah. you know, how you're saying right when you locked up, and this is uh, this was maybe like a week five or something. Six. Yeah, oh five. Yeah. yeah. So this is maybe like a week or two into jujitsu. Right, even then, right when we locked up, I knew oh, okay that there is zero chance of me beating Dean right well, now. Yeah, or that's maybe when ever, Dave yeah. Burke came on and we were talking about Top Gun and how like he 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 set it up really nicely and he's like, oh, if you had a guy that was really good and blah blah blah, yeah, yeah. this whole thing, he's like, then his chance of beating, uh, you know, me as a Top Gun instructor would be zero, yeah, zero <laughs> percent. There's no, and yeah. that's kind of the situation. Yes. There's literally, I'm saying there's actually no possible way. No possible way that you could have submitted Dean Lister. Nope. No possible way. And I knew that, like, literally right when we locked up. And I was like, oh, okay. And it was, <clears throat> uh, and even at that point, even before, this was like when you were in Pride. This was like right yeah. after you won, uh, or maybe right before. No, no, it was right before you won ADCC. Oh, man. Or right after. I don't know. I remember one day you came in and everyone cheered for you because it was the first, uh, you know, it was like your mm-hmm. second day Maybe it was when I faced Jean-Jacques Machado in the super fight, maybe. Yes, oh, that's yeah, what yeah. it was. Actually, yep, yeah, no, that's when exactly what it was. When you faced Jean-Jacques Machado in the super fight, so we had Comprito, who's an awesome guy, yeah. came up to help train you. And so we were all training you and we were all training with you. And and uh, when we got to the fight, this is the, this is the difference in attitudes, right? Yeah. So we got to the match. I won't call it a fight because it's not a fight; it's a match. Yeah. And you were going against John Jacques Machado, who's a you know legendary legendary mm-hmm. jujitsu player. And when you got to like a dominant position, and you were up by like, like hold on, yeah, you were up by like three or four Jacques points. Was like, Go for the uh, you were saying, <laughs> yeah. Go for the submission. Comprito's like, oh, no, hold, hold right there, hold. You got this, you know, like Brazilian's that type very, of thing. Strategical Brazilians, yeah. stick by their. And game I'm plan. going finish him. <laughs> <laughs> that day was a good day. It was yeah. funny right before the match. Comprito trained for like three weeks, you know, and uh, Comprito right before the match he goes, "Hey, Dean, I want to talk to you." He said it in English section. He went, "Just so you know, I came down here to help you, and if you don't win today." I've let you down, and I feel like I'm a, I'm a like, whatever. And I was like, he's like, yeah, so if you lose, I lose also, and 
you know, I really hope you win. And, and I'm like, damn, the, the pressure, you know? <laughs> <laughs> was that ownership? <laughs> like, yeah, one of it, I'm like, I don't want to let this guy down. Of, yeah. It's like, I let you down if I'm like, oh, I'm not, I'll, I don't want to let you down. <laughs> played some psyops yeah. on you. Psyops, yeah. It's pretty cool and it worked. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that was it. That was good. It's good. Well, it's because my point is it's cool to hang with you in this yeah, capacity. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's slightly different, but like, it's more it. simple cool nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah. Dean, any closing thoughts? No, just, uh, you mentioned the first responders. I think for them, most importantly, get on the mat. If you, uh, any kind of first responder, you deal with erratic people. I think it's really good. Uh, it does take some some measure to put yourself in the situation where you are you will be weaker than people to get stronger. But I think it's very important. I think that's I see more seals than I'm at than I do cops, and I think cops need more you know, than, than a seal. You know, so mm-hmm. I hope to see more of the first responders on the mat learning this kind of stuff. It's it's really valuable, definitely. And I look forward to the immersion camp. Looking yeah, forward to that. Yeah. Looking forward. Awesome, man. Well, uh, obviously, thanks for coming on, Dean. I know we've been putting this off for a while, and uh, I'm sure you'll be back on again, and we'll talk more jujits stories, etc. <laughs> Check out. <laughs> and uh, thanks to everyone else out there for listening, and and especially those of you that wear the uniform. So yeah, you know military police firefighters border patrol paramedics other first responders we know that all of you make sacrifices every day to protect us and we absolutely thank you for that and like Dean I also hope that all of you in all those jobs find some time to train some jujitsu because it'll make you better at your job it'll make you better at life and if you can't find jujitsu Go find some boxing or some judo or some wrestling or some Muay Thai or some way to train so that you can fight when the time comes. And and really that goes to everyone that is listening to this. If you can, get out there and fight. Get out there and fight. Fight literally and fight metaphorically in your everyday life. Fight against the enemy, fight against the criminals, fight against fire and catastrophe, fight against your training partners, fight against your weakness, fight against sloth, fight against laziness and stagnation, and fight to stay on the path and live in accordance with the way. By getting out there and getting after it. And until next time, this is Dean and Echo and Jocko out.